Thank you for your patronage. Thank you! What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of Mentally Gone Reacts. My name is Callie Lacerda. And I'm Gabriela Lopes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Batman. Uh, I was trying to come up with something clever that I hadn't said in the first episode, but then I was like, in the first episode, no, in the second one, I was like, I'm Batman. I I think I did that too. Yeah. Anyways, I'm we Batman. we are Batman. Um, we are going to be reacting to the final installment in this trilogy. So it's gonna tie everything together. It's gonna tie all loose ends, and it's gonna bring it to a grand finale. And I am beyond excited. Like, I just want to see how they wrap this up because people deem this, again, it's one of the greatest, if not the greatest, superhero trilogy of all time. And does um does Christian Bale ever make a comeback in any other DC movies? I don't know. Well, then that's going to be hard because, you know... I like Christian Bale, Batman. <laughs> okay. He's uh, so cool. He's a cool guy. <laughs> he's a cool guy. Well, let me see. Hopefully, what's her name? Um, The girl, uh, Rachel. What's her name? Ooh, I'm not going to even guess. The girl. The girl that, you know, he grew no. up with. Rachel. Rachel. I, I really hope She's Rachel's She's dead. In this one. Yeah, I really hope that Rest in peace. Rachel's friend is in this one. <laughs> you know, she probably has a friend, a sister or something. I hope she shows up. Um, Anyways, <laughs> with that being said, guys, <laughs> and do you know what's funny? Just like a side <laughs> comment. Um, I try to read all the comments because I generally like I genuinely want to see like people's interpretation of the movies that we watch. Um, not not always am I able to really like reply to each comment. First, mainly because I feel like it's it's um it's very hard for you to respond with intention to every single comment. And mm -hmm. so if you give someone like a response, like a well thought out and well um, structured response that that shows that you're actually like responding with your soul and not just like a robot, like thanks for the reaction. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then just like or or thanks for the comment or whatever, just like most YouTubers do. Um I like to write paragraphs, like whole essays, responses. And so my point is, like, I saw this one comment of someone saying that you point out, like, guys in movies and stuff. And yeah. that you find them cute and attractive. And then someone was like, she's the type to flirt with all the guys at a party. And then, and then like... I don't even go to parties. And then I just <laughs> thought to myself, like, people don't understand humor anymore. Like, they don't understand yeah. sarcasm. Like, they don't understand any of that like they're just oblivious also a, a like i think it's fair like you think margot robbie is attractive you know i think it's fair to s like be you <laughs> find like celebrities attractive like you're never even gonna meet them exactly you know and even if you did like y you know what i'm saying it's like and there is it's like thing. one of those things like a school girl having a crush on a on a guy in like middle school yeah. you know it's like and there is such thing as um as objective attractive like being yeah, objectively attractive exactly. you know like it's the symmetry idea yeah. it's like some human beings are fucking beautiful dude yeah. like, like brad pitt's a beautiful angelina MF. jolie angelina jolie is a beautiful mf yeah and all these people are beautiful mfs you know so if you see them on screen like they're on screen for a reason so it's yeah like, that's why they're there man yeah that's why they have th also like he's playing a playboy yeah. that, that's, a, that's a giveaway that obviously he's an attractive person well like no one can say it out loud now yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. it's like <laughs> it's just funny though like how 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 people <laughs> just are so quick to like make these comments and judge and then they make an assessment of your whole identity and personality basing off of like one behavior that they see on camera on a yeah. website on the internet well let me correct myself because he's not a playboy he's a pretend playboy yeah. so that's my he's mistake a strategic playboy. yes yeah um but I f yeah, like I find that so funny. I didn't even see that comment. But I've never even been to a club, and I'm almost 24 years old. So yeah, which is wild. Uh, yeah, I've never been to a bar. I've never been to a club. I've never 
kissed a stranger you know <laughs> like so that that already tells you the kind of person i am so right. there you go but <laughs> but do you know what it is too and like this is super off topic but again it's mentally gone for a reason so like maybe that's why you guys like these yeah. um these like banters but it's just interesting because nowadays Bas. every girl right like it's it's the norm for every girl to have an only fans for every girl to be like that type you know like and there's nothing wrong with it per se, like to each their own, but it's like it's become the norm. And that's why men specifically, like they see an attractive girl and they're like, oh, she's definitely a H O E. She's definitely this. She's definitely an S L U T. Like, yeah, like it's so it's so weird. It's such a weird world that we live in that people don't even like try to understand who people are anymore. It's just yeah, quick to judge. They don't want to even listen. Yeah. So they just like look at you and then base stuff just on. Yeah, you and, know, and minor they, things. And they project their own insecurities too, you yeah. know. It's like maybe they don't have luck with the uh, with the women and then they come on the internet and they see this attractive woman and she speaks well, she has interesting ideas and then it's like how do I diminish her value, you know? And then the same thing against me. It's like people have have like, you know, comments like this guy has no idea what he's doing. This guy is stupid. This guy's that. It's because like I know for a fact that a lot of my points are valid you know because i've thought them through like i've thought them out like very well thought out um and i just connect stuff i read stuff like i'm just like an avid learner you know so like that's why i speak the way i do but that's not to say that i'm better than anybody but it's <coughs> but my point is like a lot of people no, just project it's their insecurities like, it's all subjective too yeah right? yeah so it's, it's like, also you know yeah. Yeah. um but yeah uh yeah i completely get what you're saying but that's why I don't even bother with those comments because I've seen a lot of like weird comments too. Yeah, yeah. And then I just like literally shrug over it. I'm like, oh, whatever. Yeah. Uh, you're either here for the reaction or you're here for whatever other weird yeah. thing that you're here for. Like, and I don't know. but <laughs> And listen, if it's a weird <laughs> thing, you have to like ask yourself what's going on in your life that you have to go on a reaction channel and just do all that, you know? Yeah. It's like you have a serious problem if you can't watch a video and just like be civilized <laughs> for like a for like a few yeah. minutes, you know, like like an just hour or so. Civil. Yeah, just like that says a lot about you as a person, as a man, as a woman, like whatever, you know. But anyway. Anyway, so we just uh, had uh, that's what we're going to call it there, guys. Um, <laughs> and thank you so much for tuning in to our Dark Knight Rises yeah. reaction. And yeah. But anyways, I'm excited I'm to excited. see Bruce yeah. Wayne. Bruce, Bruce Wayne, Wayne, Bruce Wayne, Batman, Bruce Wayne, Bateman, Bateman, Bateman. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> Bateman, uh, Batman, Patrick Christian Batman. Bale, Patrick um, Batman. Yeah, I'm excited to see Patrick Batman. All right. So with that being said, um, glasses on. Not for me. And let's see what this is all about. Do we have to give like a recap, or I feel like that's <laughs> not like I guess we could just. Well, we could just say real quick that uh, the last w movie ended with the Joker getting captured. But we know that that the Joker is not yeah, yeah, in this yeah. one because obviously, you know. Also, people corrected us. Heath Ledger did not kill himself. Mm, yeah, he yeah. I saw those comments. So it's like he just... It was like an accidental... Yeah. Like, it was an accidental overdose. overdose. Yeah. Right. Right. Which, you know, that's also subjective. It's like it's always hard to Which say. Which is debatable, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. But but the but the fact of the matter is that he did spiral into like a Madness. dark side, Maybe, you know, yeah. like a dark like a rock bottom a little bit. Yes. Yeah. And whether that had something to do with the role or not, whatever. Mm -hmm. But even if it wasn't like you know a taking his own life situation, it still was sad. You yeah, know? it's sad. And then I'm curious to see how they you know, brush over that and how they're going to, like, make sense of the Joker not being here anymore. Well, well, at the end, he's just getting, like, he, he got captured. So in this case, like, he could just be, like, locked in up, prison. you know? Yeah. yeah. And that's it. Undergoing treatment, yeah. He's in, like, the deepest, uh, <laughs> yeah. the deepest security, like, strongest security hold of a prison. Yeah, and then it just ended with uh, Two-Face uh, died and yes. um batman took the fault for it and then he's now being portrayed as the villain in society in gotham and then two-face was portrayed as the white knight i believe as the hero as the ideal hero and now he's on the run batman on the run man the dark knight all right so with that being said guys uh 
let's just start this up. Um, to all the patrons, thanks again for um, subscribing to the Patreon, for joining that community. Uh, you guys have early access to all of these reaction videos. You guys have full length, uncut reactions. I was his friend. And it will be a very long time before someone inspires us the way he did. Hypocrisy, the lies. I believed in heart attack. Well, he could be saying that and thinking of, of Batman, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's exactly what he was doing. Whoa. Where are these people? Who is this guy? Why is he standing like that? <laughs> Look at this guy. You don't get to bring friends. They're not my friends. Don't worry. No choice for them. And why would I want them? They were trying to grab your prize. Oh my gosh. One of them is Bruce Wayne. I have a feel. The mask. Oh. Oh, never mind. What? The first one to talk gets to stay on my aircraft. What? So they're gonna throw them out? A lot of loyalty for a hired gun. Or perhaps he's wondering why someone would shoot a man. <gasps> it doesn't matter who we are. What matters is our plan. That voice is so familiar. No one cared who I was till I put on the mask. If I pull that off, will you die? It would be extremely painful. You're a big guy. For you. Hmm, for you. Interesting, it doesn't matter who we are. Was getting caught part of your plan? Of course. Oh, shoot. With no survivors. Oh my gosh. <gasps> oh shoot. They didn't have them handcuffed? Well, that was dumb. Yeah. Look at that. Wow. Is this real? What the heck is going on here? Is that guy dead? like doing a blood transfusion maybe <gasps> oh my gosh uh, who is this guy that they're trying to save no they expect one of us in the wreckage brother have we started the fire the fire rises wow he's gonna sacrifice himself yeah i mean the other people had no problem doing it I really wonder if this is on uh, practical effects because in the last one people were saying that that truck scene where it flips over yeah that that was real wow and that they actually resorted to practical effects which is wild to think about in the middle of a street in the city flip a, a freaking semi truck dude yeah. so i don't put it past christopher nolan damn they had to get a secluded spot to do something like that yeah harvey dent's uncompromising stand against organized crime it made Gotham a safer place than it was at the time of his death eight years ago. Isn't this the eight Wayne? Eight years ago? Isn't this the Wayne Manor? Oh my God. Sweetheart, not too fast with the child. Shrimp boss. Jim Gordon. Thank you. Tell you the truth about Harvey Dent. Ooh. This guy likes balls in his mouth. You saw. That's Anne Anne Hathaway, right? Yeah, I think so. Anne Hathaway. I did not know she was in this. I think I know her from like Princess Diaries or something. You're right. It's <laughs> it's her, right? Is it's it? the girl. Yeah. Oh my gosh, his face still creeps me out. Mm -hmm. Maybe for now, all I should say about the death of Harvey Dent is this. It has not been for nothing. Hmm. Damn, he sacrificed himself for eight years. Everyone knows that Wayne's holed up in there with eight inch nails, peeing into mason jars. It's very good of you to let me on the ground. Oh, snobby people. I know, like they like the fact that Bruce Wayne is down, you know? You think she's a new love interest? Maybe. Must be popular with his wife. Not really. She took the kids and left for Cleveland. I have plenty of time for visits. What? She's like snooping around. Yeah. Alfred said just dropped a tray and that's it. He said nothing more. Oh, oh. no. Who's this Kane guy? You think it's Raj al it's Raz al Ghul? People were correcting me with the pronunciation. <gasps> oh my god. Oh my god. Look at him with the mustache with a goatee. 
Oh, shit, look at him. It is uh, Mr. Wayne, isn't it? <laughs> he kind of looks like Alan Watts. Reminds me of one that belonged to my mother. Mm. Can't be the same one. Because her pearls are in the safe. His mother's pearls. Is it the same that she was wearing when she died? <gasps> what oh. the heck? It was uncrackable. Oh. But you wouldn't beat up a woman any more than I would beat up a cripple. What? Who is this lady? Good night, Mr. Wayne. Huh? What? <laughs> okay. With his mother's pearls? I would not let that slide. Look at that. Look at that. Look at this evil lady, dude. Oh my gosh, she just have the sword. Very persistent. And quite lovely, in case you were wondering. Wasn't <laughs> Alfred wants him to find a girlfriend. Must wait. <laughs> That's so <laughs> sick, dude. In our future home, we're going to have a secret room like that. Just like that. It's like something, <laughs> like one mechanism is going to activate it and it's going to open like into our studio. It's going to be the coolest thing ever, guys. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be something crazy. Trying to find out more about our jewel thief. Ran her prints, unless she's lost a lot of weight. She was... <laughs> 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 oh my gosh. <gasps> How do you wear someone else's fingerprints? Full of close calls, tips of... Fences. She's good, but the ground is shrinking beneath her feet. Cat burglar. Selena cat burglar. Gives a good pull and untraceable. No, oh, sure. That's a lady. You two should exchange notes over coffee. He just wants them to find a wife. You hung up your cape and your cow, but you didn't move on. You never went to find a life. Mm -hmm. And you lost them. But that's all part of living, sir. But you're not living. You're just waiting. He never told him about her letter. That would have helped him. I took a holiday. I, I went to Florence. There's this cafe on the banks of the Arno. Every fine evening, I'd sit there and order a Fernie Franca. Hmm. Look at him in Florence. I always knew there was nothing here for you except pain and tragedy. And <sighs> I wanted something more for you than that. It's like he's talking to like every child right now, you know? It's like, find what's meaningful. Pursue what's meaningful and not what's expedient. Yeah. I count to five. In fact, I am counting to ten. Right now. <laughs> That's crazy. Mm. That's so smooth. <laughs> it's like this guy has experience be being a villain. I don't trust her. <laughs> She's no. really good at putting on an act. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> To just give me what we agreed. We can't have loose ends. And even in that dress, no one's gonna miss you. What? They're not gonna be looking in a place like this. I don't know. You did just use his cell phone. Mmm. Traceable. Uh-oh. There we go. Wow. She's smart. <laughs> Whoa! She's like... T <laughs> she's like taking them out. She kind of reminds me of like a female Bruce Wayne, right? Like a female Batman. Yeah, look at her. She's like thinking 10 steps ahead. She's she's great at hand-to-hand -hand combat. Damn, dude. Whoa. But she kills innocent people though. Yeah. Look at her. Dude, this lady's like a chameleon. What the heck is going on? That's psychotic. <laughs> That's a <gasps> that's Patrick Bateman's <laughs> girlfriend right there, dude. Oh my god. Because we recently Because we recently watched um American Psycho. I got the congressman. And now she's just gonna Yeah sly away. Slime her way away. Yeah. Hmm. In the sewer. So something's happening in the sewer because the kid said that there's work to be done in the sewers. Mm. I wonder what it is. Like it's maybe like drug related, drug related or something. Oh yeah, maybe. Like the scarecrow, fear gas or something. Like that. I don't know. Whoa! <gasps> oh shoot! That's a gas explosion, kid. Well, the gas is a sewer. No one goes in there till we know what's down there. 
We know it's down there, so the police commissioner. Someone get this hot head out of here. Just go, just go. He's gonna find another entry point. Yeah. What is going on? Why no are you way. here? His voice is so, so cool. And you brought him down here. You panicked. And your weakness has cost the lives of three others. No, he's alone. Oh my god. Just like that? Slash him. Then I will kill you. That's crazy. Yeah, he's massive. Search him and then I will kill you. Ruthless, dude. Ruthless. <gasps> oh my god, that was so smart. Oh, and he found him. The Blake guy. That's pretty cool. I need to see Bruce Wayne. And he got the letter about Harvey Dent. Yeah. They asked me if he saw any giant alligators. He needs you. He needs the Batman. What? Commissioner Gordon thinks. Oh, he doesn't know or care who you are. But we've met before. St. Swithin's used to be funded by the Wayne Foundation. It's an orphanage. Oh, shit. I don't know why you took the fall for Dent's murder. But I'm still a believer in the Batman. Even if you're not. Wow. How did you say that your boy's home used to be? Funded by the Wayne Foundation. Might be time to get some fresh air. Start paying attention to the details. Some of those details might need your help. Wow. That gave me full body chills. I need an appointment at the hospital for my leg. Which hospital? Whichever one Jim Gordon's in. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> no, that's because there is no cartilage in your knee and not much of any use in your elbows or your shoulders between that and the scar tissue on your kidneys i cannot recommend that you go hella skiing hella skiing he shaved already yeah oh wow oh oh okay the mask is back on all right wow we were in the skin that you were gone oh man I said, well, we try to bury it. The Batman has to come back. Hmm. Oh my gosh. I have a wife up that about was only 60 bucks in here. Not like a watch. <laughs> She's so slimy, dude. What? I guess that's why they were saying cat burglar. burglar yeah. She's like, you know. A non conspicuous Lamborghini Aventador. Just makes like an illegal U turn. But that's Bruce Wayne! Mr. Wayne! Oh, Mr. Wayne! Wayne, Wayne, Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> A stiff, and then it's like, huh. Oh, wow. You saw? Mm, yeah. He just turned off all the electronics by clicking a button. That's so cool. Society hag laid this on. Actually, this is my part, Mr. Wayne. Mm. <laughs> Society hag. <laughs> But a man who doesn't care about the world doesn't spend half his fortune on a plan to save it. And isn't so wounded when it fails that he goes into hiding. So she knows he's Batman too? It's like, how's everybody just figuring it out? Who are you pretending to be? Bruce Wayne. Eccentric billionaire. Yeah. <laughs> Being here for your walk up in Old Town, a modest place for Master Jewel Feet, which means that either you're saving for retirement or... You're in deep with the wrong people. Mm -hmm. The ladder. You and your friends better batten down the hatches, because when it hits, you're all going to wonder how you ever thought you could live so large and leave so little for the rest of us. Wow. And we've been talking about, like, this feeling of something coming, you know, in the world, in the real world. Those pearls do look better on you than they did on my city. But I still can't let you keep them. What about Ooh, her what? date? <gasps> her date is just watching? Her date is like a bodyguard. You scared her off. Look, you scared her off. <laughs> That's so crazy. I must have lost my ticket. Your wife said you were taking a cab home. My wife? She stole his car? No way, dude. She's crazy, man. It's so crazy. It takes a little time to get back in a swing, he thinks. <laughs> <laughs> Alfred is so fun, dude. He's my favorite character in this whole thing. Oh, look! Him and Mr. Fox, too. Yeah, both of them. These conversations used to end with an unusual request. I retired. 
But let me show you some stuff anyway. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> Alfred. He's trying to get them back yeah. into it. You know, like they're they're both trying to. Well, back to see. Yeah. Look at the smile on it's his It's like face. suggestive, you know? It's like, yeah, just take let a me, stroll. Let me get you excited. It's a call. Oh, it has a long, uninteresting Wayne Enterprises designation. I just took the call and get the bat. What? That's kind of too obvious. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, man. Whoa. Oh. Not bad, dude. You just became the Hulk or something. I thought he had no cartilage in his knee. What's going on? Hey. Bye. Born and raised in hell on earth. Born in prison? No one knows why or how he escaped. Mm. He was trained by Razel Gore. No? No way. You're afraid that if I go back out there, I'll fail. No. He's afraid, afraid he'll die. If you want to. Wow. What's. <gasps> That's Bane. Yeah. Oh, shoot. And I wonder what's the purpose of his mask? Yeah, Is it to help him, like, breathe? You know, like, maybe he also has a um, Achilles heel, just like Bruce Wayne with his leg. Who knows? That's scary. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wow, that's the stock exchange. Wow, look at that. Struck it at its core, you know, the core of capitalism right there. This is the pillar of capitalism. Where am I supposed to move it? Back it up. I just stay in your view, okay? I don't trust that guy. I don't trust anyone that's pretending to be an employee. Yeah. And I don't even trust these cops. Like eight minutes. Eight. A lot of eights. Oh, hostages first. I've got something. Wow. Oh, really? Dude, shoot. Right? Like yeah, shoot to kill at this point. I like shoot the tires or something. You're right. Shoot the tires. <laughs> <laughs> There's no shot. See? Oh my gosh. I, I I mean, like if you have hostages, only then the one of them has a hostage on still. the back. Uh oh. No way. Uh oh, I recognize that sound. Oh, oh! Boy, you are in for a show tonight, son. And it's his first time back, probably, if it's who I think it is. Oh, shoot. <laughs> oh, shoot. Yep. Big boy is back in town. Let's go. I just got full body chills, dude. It's so exciting. It's like. Ah, uh, it's so I hard to explain, but the music, the build-up, the atmosphere, it's so grandiose, it's so <laughs> grand. Oh. It's like everybody's shocked, you know? It's like, wow, we spotted the Batman. Everybody's like, what, the Batman? But they think he's a villain, right? Yeah, and they're going to be, you know, trying to get him now, I guess. Oh, that's ridiculous. I'm going to do what Jim Gordon never could. What's that? I'm gonna take down the Batman. Oh my gosh, that's the wrong person to take down. And what do you know? I wish you would be good, right? Like, I wish you would be well received. Helpful yeah. Here, instead of making two villains, we don't need two pain in the asses. But it doesn't seem like she does anything like blatantly evil. Like she's just trying to eat the rich, you know? Yeah. But then you could say the same thing about Bane. Yeah, true. He's getting away. Who do you want to catch on? Some robber or the son of a bitch who killed Harvey Dent? That's ridiculous. Oh. Watch where you're going, pal. Hmm. Downloaded or whatever. 
Yeah, how do you escape this? Yeah, he's he's definitely confused. He's like, uh, I don't know what I just did. Because I don't think it was part of his plan to, you know, this to happen. I don't know. Maybe it was. I think it was. Look at the time. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. And they don't do anything? That's so crazy. They don't shoot at him either. <laughs> They're like, whatever. Yeah. This possible murderer. How could you lose it? You got a lot of firepower. What, and you don't? Yeah, <laughs> see, that guy's like... <laughs> that guy's literally your brain. I know. Look at that. Wow. Oh my. Wow. Oh my god. That's so sick, dude. Oh. Oh. You might have the wrong animal there, sir. Oh. Oh my god. You see? What? The bat. That's the bat. <laughs> Look at everybody's face. It's a freaking flying. Oh, oh my him. gosh. You sure it was him? <laughs> <laughs> that no. was the bat, dude. That was the bat. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Look at Gordon smiling. Hey, can we get some girls in here? Whoa. <gasps> How is she everywhere? I know. Hold it right there. Oh my gosh. Yeah, her her suit is pretty cool though. <laughs> yeah, she she reminds me of the Batman. Slate, where you type in someone's name, date of birth, in a few minutes they're gone from every database on Earth. That sounds good, actually. It's a gangland map. Oh shoot! I mean, she could escape. I'm not bluffing. They know. They just don't care. I was going to ask you, like, do you think that she's going to end up good or bad? Uh, who knows? That's why I'm saying it would be cool for her to do, like, you know? Yeah. Duo with... No guns, no killing. Where's the fun in that? <laughs> See? Oh, he might... He might switch her over to the good side. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the fun in killing? Well, that's pretty wild. <laughs> Warn me about getting into cars with strange men. This isn't a car. <laughs> this isn't a car. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Look at this thing, dude. Is this how I imagine like alien spacecrafts being? <laughs> yeah. I really care about a powerful friend. I sold his prince to Daggett. I was about to say he's like giving away his identity. Mm-hmm. Oh, just like he does to Gordon. Oh my god. <laughs> so that's what that feels like. Oh, ironic. Look at that. I wonder if that's practical effects right there. That would be impressive for real. <laughs> yeah. Like Christopher Nolan casually invents futuristic technology like that. Yeah. Raz al Ghul was the League of Shadows and I beat him. Bane is just a mercenary. We need to find out what he's up to. Trades of some kind. That's a fair point. Give this to Fox. He can crack the code and tell us what trades they were executing. Mm, what trades, right. Finishing the battle. Life beyond that awful cave. Half an adventure by knowing that we had decided to be together. That was my life beyond mm. the cave. He's going to tell him. He has to tell him. And it also means losing someone that I have cared for since I first heard his cries. But it might also mean saving your life is more important. Wow. Goodbye, Alfred. God, I love Alfred so much. Such a great character. Oh, my gosh. Wayne Enterprises is about to fall into the hands of John Daggett. Hmm. You need to convince the board. Get behind her. Let's show her the reactor. Oh, the. I thought you might like to see what your investment built. New fossil fuels. Free clean energy for an entire city. Free energy. Hmm. Okay. 
All right. He's making sound decisions. It was too late in the tournament before. I didn't know what to do. They had paperwork. I didn't know what to say. Oh, because they're because they're getting his belongings because he's broke. Going around the city at 24 hours a day. How exactly is that supposed to help my company absorb Wayne? This guy's got some big balls. Mm. You feel in charge? Mm. I have so much to say already about this movie. Oh so my much to gosh. Say. Your money and infrastructure have been important till now. Oh, shoot. Evil. I'm necessary evil. <gasps> what did he do? That is He's the way not a mark. And he doesn't have a cent to his name anyway. <laughs> I like your place. Mr. Wayne, I'm sorry they took all your money. No, you're not. <laughs> She's always playing a character. Like, I, I can't tell. I know. I could tell that she was fake right there. Uh, I wonder if they're going to, you know, be something maybe. Just the girl Alfred wanted him to be. <laughs> Remind me to tell detail. To keep hotheads out. No, oh, he keeps saying that. Do you have keys? Never need them. <laughs> He's going to have to break into his own house. Yep. <laughs> But what's her angle, you know? Who's Rachel. This? That's who you'll never be. Boom, mic drop. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I knew someone. She's been trying to see him for a while now. Yeah. Remember at the beginning? <laughs> but my question is what's the angle? I don't know. Because at least Selena, we understand her <laughs> angle kind of, you know? Oh. The power went out. Mm, my power's been shut off. <laughs> He's literally broke, dude. But he owns the estate. See, like, even when they go broke, like, they're not, like, broke people. You know, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, look at that. They just made love by the fireplace. <laughs> An old mistake. I wonder if he likes her, you know? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know either. I just can't trust her. It's like I have this intuition with, with people. I just can't trust her face. Like, I don't know. There's something about her character. No, I'm also feeling that. And I think that the scar on her back. It's supposed to mean something, yeah, right? It's yeah, something. I required it to keep it out of the wrong hands. Still don't trust me, huh? <laughs> We're just talking about trust. They're not your average brawlers. Neither am I. <laughs> How does nobody who recognizes Bruce Wayne not recognize Batman? Like, just look at his mouth, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's, He's behind you. Who? Yeah. Look at this, like two smoothly moving people. The, the cat and the bat. Yeah. Look at that. Oh. Oh, oh my gosh. That's crazy, right? Yeah. Like you just see him moving like. <laughs> oh, it's a trap. What? Just when I said that, I kind of trust her, dude. You made a serious mistake. Not as serious. <gasps> what? Bane. Well, she was taking him to Bane, though. Well, hello. What do you mean, though? <laughs> oh my gosh, this guy's massive. Look at that. This has cost you strength. Victory has defeated you. <laughs> wow, dude. Victory has defeated you. Wow. Peace has cost you your strength. This guy is huge. I know. It's a freaking tank, dude. Freaking human tank. Look at that. It's like punching a, a punching bat. Like, uh, you know, like yeah. those like s very sturdy ones. Those like boxing guards. <laughs> Hardly bug. Yeah. Oh my god. <sighs> Is she gonna go help him or not? Like, oh. <laughs> Oh my gosh. 
Oh, you think darkness is your ally? Well, it is. I didn't see the light until I was already a man. By then, it was nothing to me but bright. <laughs> oh, shoot. Wow. Your precious armory, gratefully accepted. We will need it. Oh, there. Oh, my God. <gasps> what? That's crazy. <laughs> Oh, your buddy! <gasps> he just broke his back. Oh my god, I heard it. And he just broke his back. Oh god, now I wonder what happened to him. Bane's quotes? I have to rewatch this later just to listen. Like, he said so many powerful things that are really resonating with me. Yeah, just like Ra's al Ghul would, remember? Same thing. It's wisdom, you know? Like, wisdom hits and it resonates on a deep level. If you really listen and pay attention to what he's saying. Do you mind? Oh, my God, dude. Oh. You know what, like, she's super badass, though. Like, I really respect her. Because, look, she's doing things not for, her, like, evil. She's doing it for self-preservation. I spotted you. I was looking for a friend of mine. Bruce Wayne. Did they kill him? Oh, she, she knows. knows, yeah. I'm not sure. She was almost crying when she was watching him getting, you know, mutilated. Yeah. Destroyed. Like, I saw her eye building up tear. What is going on here? Oh, it's the pit that Alfred told him that Bane came from. You don't fear that. You welcome it. Your punishment must be more severe. Oh, no. When it is done, and Gotham is ashes, then you have my permission to die. Wow. Oh, shoot. They're locking her up? Yeah, because he offered her protection if she snitched. No more patrols. No more hiders. Sink get every available cop down there and smoke him out. The mayor won't want panic. Oh, they keep like with like holding back. He would try the crime. <laughs> Look at this shot. Oh my God. Look at the music. The chant. Of course not. <gasps> oh my gosh. Dead. Whatever it is they want you to see. It's happening soon. Oh man. This guy might be worse than the Joker. He's yeah. Because he's organized, like he like he's just like the Batman, you know, it's like it's his perfect match. Yeah. The Joker was also his perfect match, obviously, but but the Joker was like a perfect opposite. This one's like a perfect match. It's like hard to explain, but both both mentored by Ra's al Ghul. Exactly, they both have the same teachers, so it's more dangerous. Oh man! Look at all these cops just walking to this tunnel when it obviously feels like a trap to me. Yeah. Uh, uh, the police force, like, it's just showing that, you know, that society's defense is very f flawed. Hi. This is so crazy. Oh, this is the Russian scientist. He's not dead, but society presumes that he's dead because of the plane crash. A four megaton nuclear bomb. A nuclear, oh yeah, he said. It could be used as a nuclear weapon. As detective, we're not allowed to believe in coincidence. Oh shoot. Oh shoot. He didn't kill him though. I know, but still, he's... Oh, what? Did you see that? He... Oh, this is insane. See? 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 You're going underground. You're gonna get freaking locked in there, dude. The trap! Pull everyone out! Bane has been pouring concrete laced with explosives! Where? Look at the <gasps> silence. Let the games begin!
look at that. It's like in multiple points of the city. It's like collapsing. Oh, <gasps> oh my god. Oh my gosh. Killed, they killed the mayor just now, you saw? Just like that. Wow, what a shot. Oh my god, dude. Gotham! Take control. Take control of your city. Oh my gosh, this guy's actually insane. What? I didn't think there could be anyone worse than the Joker. Every cop in the city's down in those tunnels. Not every cop. Yeah, he's the last cop. No, no, they're both the last cop. <laughs> yeah. Because the other guy's a coward, the other dude that's radioing in. Oh, gosh. <sighs> wow. So are you okay? A police officer needs to call right now. Sure, are you okay? Yeah, okay, now get out of the car. Look at this, it's the apocalypse. Oh, they're trying to find uh, Commissioner Gordon because they know that there's one cop left that they didn't account for. Look at the tension, man. The soundtrack for this movie is insane. Like, it's giving me full body chills. I don't know what I'm feeling right now. Oh, it's so crazy. It's so intense. Well, he's gonna get away. Come on. He has to. This might be too early to say, but I love this movie. Me already. too. Like, I'm loving this so much. All of it. And at the end, I have so much to say. It's a fully primed neutron bomb. And who is capable of disarming such a device? Only me. Only you. Oh my gosh. Thank you, good doctor. <gasps> no, no. <gasps> this bomb is mobile, and the identity of the trigger man is a mystery. For one of you holds the detonator. What? Oh, look, and the military's coming in. Or it's blocking the exit. I don't know what's happening. People of Gotham, we have not abandoned you. Mm -hmm. Sammy, it means we're on our own. <laughs> it means they have abandoned us, yeah. Look at those things from the Wayne Enterprises. <laughs> mm hmm. Harvey Dent, who has been held up to you as the shining example of justice oh my gosh he's gonna release all the prisoners mm -hmm. of Gotham's police commissioner mm, his letter I praise the madman who tried to murder my own child oh my god and it is time for me to resign and do you accept this man's resignation? Do you see how it's narrowing the screen? Yeah, it's like getting closer, right? No, yeah. no. You mean like it's squeezing? Black gate. Yeah, Denied look, look, the, the black edges. Oh. That's weird, right? It's like, yeah, I didn't even pick up on that. It's creating tension. To plunge their hands into the filth so that you can keep yours clean. Yeah. Damn. Your hands look plenty filthy to me, Commissioner. Mm. Is he being serious? I mean, it makes him a, a corrupt person, too. They can't do this. It will endure. Gotham will survive. 52 hours, it said? Or is it like three months, he said, or something like that? Yeah, he know. said five months. Five so. months, yeah. Uh, I don't see how this movie is gonna. <laughs> 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 yeah, any good. <laughs> I don't see how they have enough time to show us five months. Doctors fumbling attempts to repair the damage left him in perpetual agony. The mask holds the pain at bay. Hmm. You can use that. There was a mercenary who worked for a local warlord who fell in love with the warlord's daughter. The mercenary was. Condemned to this pit. Hmm. The mercy understood that was the daughter who had secured his release. But what he could not know was the true price of his freedom. Wow. She took his place in the pit. Wow. And she was with child. I mean, the, the, the mercenary child. Innocence cannot flower on the ground, it has to be stamped out. <laughs> One day, the doctor forgot to lock the cell. 
Oh no. Oh no. The child had a friend. A protector. Vertebra. Oh. Protruding from your oh. back. Oh my uh, gosh. I just straightened my back right now. <laughs> mm. Good posture, good posture all the time, all the time. I have such bad back pain all the time, too. Yeah, I have so. to fix my posture now the whole time of the movie. I'm oh gonna be my gosh. On. That gives me so much agony, like so much. Uh... I think I would return. Oh, what? No. Isn't he dead? He died what? in the last movie. Wait, I thought it was freaking Bane for a second. No, his voice is much more. See? Oh, there are many forms of immortality. Take him from me. You're in a nice <gasps> What? What? <laughs> shadows fulfills its duty to restore balance to civilization. Wow. Gotham has been on the saving. Wow. He must be allowed to die. <laughs> wow full body chills i'm telling you like i wish there was like a machine that like tracks that multiple throughout this whole thing oh my so so he was like f hallucinating that not hallucinating maybe but it was like a ghost a yeah spirit. yeah that's crazy so bane is ra's al Ghul's son oh my gosh and he went down there to protect his son young cops like dogs hmm Oh, look at him. Look at him go. That's ooh, crazy. Ooh, ooh. Here, there. What's the difference? Oh, there's a huge difference. <laughs> Come on. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. What are they chanting? If anybody knows, could you guys please translate in the comments? Because there's no captions to translate it. So that doesn't kill you. Okay, because I, I thought that the first guy that they showed, like, he died. Pro well, probably, like, depending if he hit the wall or whatever, you know? And it definitely screws you up even more, like... It's only a child, yeah. Born in hell. A childlike nature. Childlike nature. Not a man from privilege. Wow. Mm. Mm, that so is you need like a childlike nature to rise you know it's purity it's not a man that's been contaminated by the trappings of civilization so profound he's guarding the outflow south of ackerman park blow the rubble we can make a hole big enough for 10 at a time now, i'm in contact with my partners down there they're just waiting for the day men who haven't seen daylight in three months three months three months we'll go off 23 days 23 could you disarm it i could reconnect it to the reactor it. Let's move away from this location and then call it in. <gasps> what? I'm so confused. How about your schedule, Captain? <coughs> yeah, he's a big guy. Round them up for judgment. That's and it. hang them where the world can see. Oh my gosh. Wow, look at that. From the bridge. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. 23 days. 23 days. Come on, Bruce. Come on, Bruce. Oh, oh, that's what it was reminding me of. Oh my gosh. That's what it was reminding me of. I was like, this, this freaking thing looks familiar. Wow. I fear dying in here while my city burns. There's no one there to save it. Then make the climb as the child is without the rope. No safety. Then fear will find you again. Hmm. Wow, man. Christopher Nolan's scripts are crazy. Is that me? Oh, look. Rise. What does that mean? Rise. Wow. wow. So, so. 
<gasps> oh my gosh. It's his fear manifesting. Wow. Or it's like his like soul. His soul is Batman. I'm like tearing up. This is so insane. Oh my gosh. Wow. 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 And he throws the rope down for the others. Wow. Wow, because by rising, raising yourself, you raise all those around you. Oh God. You, you teach others through your raising. Oh my God, I'm getting so emotional. It's so crazy. You are Philip Striver, Executive Vice President. Oh, shoot, look, Scarecrow. You follow the thick ice. You try to swim. You get minutes. Oh, so no one made it. Wow, you have to walk on thin ice when you're alone, you know, like when you're exiled. <sighs> it's all chance. Jim, he's not here. You let your wife come to the door when the city's under occupation? No, oh, the coward. Look, see? Mm -hmm. He's a coward. Damn. I'm not surprised. You feel lost, little bastard? Now, you boys know you can't come into my neighborhood without asking for like. Oh, she's back. Stole the apple. The kid has stolen apple. I thought they killed you. Not yet. <gasps> it's him. And he cleans up so fast. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, Brucey. After what I did to you. I'll admit I was a little let down. There's more to you. Forgiveness. But tomorrow that bomb's going off. Tomorrow already. It's like a tracking device. Mm. Or it's to read the uh, radiation. Death! By exile. She gets spared. You know what I'm saying? It's like I, I'm, I'm trying to get her angle. Like I can't read her. I can't read her. She's like a missing link in this whole thing. To get me back in the game. Sorry to spoil things, boys, but if anyone these guys to himself. I was gonna say I can't read this girl. Like, can she? I could read her. <laughs> No, but for a split second, I was like, come on. Mm hmm. <laughs> you should be so lucky. Oh, I remember this little thing, this little back here. Uh. Yes, but I'll need the EMP cannon guidance map from the bat. Oh, man. The bat, the bat suit. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, it's parked, hidden with some invisibility cloak device, <laughs> camouflage device. <laughs> Come on. Come on, Batman. Come save Gordon. <laughs> oh, shoot. Or this guy. Yeah, this guy's doing the Lord's work right now, man. Like, he's yeah. taking on every responsibility. He's Literally, the city of Gotham has been resting on his shoulders. MVP right here. Yeah. Ooh, he's saving them. Oh, shit. No. <laughs> Just as you were celebrating. <laughs> Look at that. Uh-oh. No way. Lock it up. Oh, <gasps> a grenade. No. What the hell? Oh, those are like spiked with poison, like like sleeping darts. Oh, that's so sick. Light it up. He's so happy, like he's trying to contain his happiness. He's like, oh, I recognize that voice. Oh, let's go, let's go. <laughs> the reunion I was waiting for. Wow. Oh, shoot. That's so beautiful, man. The bat symbol. 
Oh, that's why they always have to take a hostage, you know? Oh. Damsel in distress. Yeah, exactly. No, this guy does not deserve to die. Does I not know, deserve to die. If please. they kill him, then this movie like stops being good for me. Okay, good, uh, good. I know it's unrealistic and stuff, but you no, can't. You it's can't not let him die. unrealistic. Come on. Batman is everywhere. Yeah, it really is. Like Batman is omnipresent. Like the idea, you know, of <sighs> of, of Batman. You missed the spot. <laughs> you missed the spot. Boop. You're walking alone. Where's the mask? I'm not afraid to be seen standing up to these guys. The mask's not for you. It's for the fact of people you care about. Hmm. Count to five to throw. One, two, three. <laughs> He's like, oh shoot, I forgot. Hey no, Fess, but you got something bigger than that belt! <laughs> <laughs> oh look and he freed them the bat and the cat i i like their little dynamic dude i'm telling you i i like this yeah i'll open that tunnel then i'm gone hmm. there's more to you than that yeah like stop being selfish come on Believe me. yourself you don't owe these people anymore You've given them everything. Not everything. Not yet. Give them redemption. Yeah, give them an opportunity to redeem themselves. At the very least. Which is what he's doing by freeing the cops and stuff and coming back. And, and she's doing everything in those heels. I know, right? Like, her yeah. feet doesn't get tired? Like, I can only imagine her feet being like this. Like, stuck like this. That's him, right? Mm-hmm. Stepping up. Stepping up, yep. It's exactly a, like he's taking the same leap that Bruce Wayne took. You have to take a leap with no safety net. Wow, look how many. 3,000 cops, right? My, I guess. Open fire. <laughs> See, hope, hope. Oh my God, look at that. That's so well done. Oh my God. All he did was just come and give them a little bit of hope to remind them of hope. Batman is hope. So beautiful, man. This movie is so beautiful. Oh shoot, and now it's... Now it's mano a mano. Yeah. The re-encounter. But now they, they, they reconnect as equals, you know, because both of them climbed out. So he doesn't so come. So you came back to die with your city. And now he's ready. Yeah. They meet as equals. They got the wrong truck. Yeah, and it's there's three pot like there's two more possible ones. Yeah. I don't know. Bane is Bane is still pretty. Oh my gosh. The mask. Uh, the mask. Yeah. His, like, he wears his weakness on his face. Look at that. Look, look. Ooh. The mask, the mask. That's his weak spot for sure. Oh, oh. There you go. There you go. They said it, it'll bring back all the pain. Yeah. And it also probably makes it harder to breathe. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Now he's becoming blinded by fury, you know, by like rage. Yeah. Ooh. You see how the screen narrowed again? Yeah, interesting, right? I didn't even pick up on that. Where is it? Tell me where the trigger is. Then you have my permission to die. 
<laughs> Let's Full circle. Go. Karma, man. Karma's real. You think you're the only one who can learn the strength to escape. The bad devil is the child of Razal. <gasps> no! I, 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 I told... Have, and though I'm not ordinary, I'm a citizen. And she has like a third eye thing, like a little like um, Buddha thing, you know, like she's enlightened, like she, she like she was the mastermind. It's interesting, man. Holy shoot. I, I told you, I, I, I can't read her. I can't read that chick. And she's probably the one that like misled them because she was overseeing the whole operation. It she, makes so much sense. She's always been everywhere. Talia. <laughs> My mother named me Talia before she was killed. <laughs> That's a girl. Yeah, I was wondering. That's freaking Joey King. Like, that's a girl actress. But I just thought that they casted, you know? Look, it looks and like then, her. And then Bane was the protector. Look. Wow. Wow. I found my father and led him back to exact terrible vengeance. By that time, the vigilant and doctor have done their work to my friend. Oh, shoot. What? Talk about a plot twist, man. Talk about a plot twist. Wow. Oh, wow. Like, like they led us down a path this whole time. Like, that's crazy. Instinct is a strong word to throw around Gotham, Bruce. Are you serious? Look at Gordon, man. I know. Gordon did something. Or or Blake. They they stabilized it. Okay. I want him to feel the heat. Feel the fire of twelve million souls. You failed. Wow. Ugh. I was not expecting this lady to have all of this power. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. <gasps> That's crazy, dude. Oh no. That's wild. At least he died with honor. Honor, yeah. You just have to imagine the fire. <gasps> oh, oh, I my thought gosh. he shot his head off for a second. I was like, what? Oh, she came back. See? Not the whole no guns thing. Not the whole no guns thing. I'm not sure I feel as strong about it as you do. Yeah, I agree. Like, 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 like some people, you can't, you can't, you can't. You need it sometimes, maybe. Sometimes you need it, yes. I do think so. And, and she could still disguise herself as, like, on Innocent. their... Innocent. Yeah, on their... Yeah, because yeah, only he knows. Oh, I love the bat so much. This thing is so badass. Stop walking! Blow it! Do what? It. No, don't do. Oh my god! <gasps> Why? Uh... Bow your heads. They're gonna pray for their last minutes. That's so bad. That's the coolest thing yeah. I've seen in a long time. That and the bat and the tanks, all this technology. One of the coolest things I've seen in a while. Oh, oh here we go. Dwindling down. <laughs> wow, that's that's crazy. And there's no more autopilot, which is what Fox said. Yeah. So he has to do it all himself. Oh shoot, the driver died? Yeah, she's gonna have to take over. And Gordon's in there, so he has to be careful with all that shooting. I know. Oh shoot, oh shoot. Okay, it's not as bad as I thought it was gonna Does be. Does she die? I hope so. 
He's probably like, God damn it, Batman. Got me bouncing around this thing. Mm hmm. Should me how to operate the reactor. Oh, like she's the only one. Oh, oh, she overrid it. The emergency flight. <gasps> No, 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 no! And he, what, if, he can't die down there? He's gonna make it out. He has to, right? Oh. No way. This bomb will be stopped. Oh my gosh, why? My father's work is done. That was such a dramatic, like... Yeah. <laughs> it's her last breath. Yeah, I'm not giving her an honorable death. That's why I'm going to laugh at it. Yeah. She came back here. So did you. I guess we're both suckers. Oh! Woo! Let's go. Let's go. That's what I was waiting That's for. That's a perfect match, in my opinion. <laughs> That's a funny relationship. Even a man doing something as simple and reassuring as putting a coat around a young boy's shoulders to let him know the world hadn't ended. Wow. Oh my gosh. Don't cry. Bruce Wayne. <gasps> oh my gosh, I just realized that he just told him. That's Batman! And there's no autopilot, so he has to see it through. You know? Like, he has to drive it. Look at that. Wow, look at the shot, man. This movie's beautiful. No. He's gonna sacrifice himself to save millions over the waters. Into the sunset. Or, you know... Trust you. I love you. I'm going to know who saved the entire city. They know. It was the Batman. The house and grounds are left to the city of Gotham, but they shall be used for one purpose and one purpose only. Wow. The housing and care of the city's at-risk and orphan children. And my clerk can help anyone with this. Martha and Thomas Wayne. I like Batman. Robin. Batman and Robin. He's Rob. Oh my God! What? What? Mr. Fox, it, it's already been fixed. Software patch. Six months ago. Check the IP on the patch. What? The. The autopilot was fixed. Oh, so there's hope. Is that what was patched? It's the autopilot. And he left them with this. It's like a coordination. Oh, it's the cafe that he said that he oh dreams of. Oh my gosh. What if he's there? Oh, that's the Batcave probably. Because he's going to be the, the heir of Batman, you know? Oh my gosh. And look who he's there with. Wow. Oh man, I thought he was gone. Oh wow. Just like that. Wow. <sighs> um I just realized that Bane is still out there. <laughs> <laughs> this is the end of the trilogy, so... He got shotgun blood. No, he got killed by the cat lady. No. She killed him? 
Yeah, she said that sometimes gun like the the no gun rule. Oh right, right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's gone. I oh, think. Oh, I yeah. You're right. I guess I thought that there was still hope for him. <laughs> like I look at people survive anything, you know. Right. So so now I think that the the heirs of Raz Al Ghul um, are cut. Mm. You know, aside from like mercenaries and people who were indoctrinated into the the gang i guess you know mm. oh man yeah l- look i i made a conscious effort to not occupy myself with notes during this reaction because of the last one like i really caught myself just like really writing a lot and not really you know being fully immersed and so this time i didn't really like pay too much mind to notes yeah no like i didn't really either like it was very like towards the end i didn't take any notes at all just because i was like just so lost in it i yeah. wanted to just ah uh, like just enjoy experiencing it a lot too what are your thoughts oh man um i like i thought that i liked the dark night but mm-hmm. i like the dark night rises better yeah to me um and this is just my personal opinion. This movie's perfect. Yeah. To me, this is my favorite movie. Um, it's going to rank top five, maybe, of all time. It's just perfect. Yeah, this perfect. is... Perfect movie. Wow. And and just like I told you, like I couldn't think of a, a better villain than the Joker. But then Bane yeah. comes along. And then not even Bane, but, but, but the daughter of Ra's al Ghul, who he killed in the first movie. <sighs> Like, not killed, but, you know, well, kind of killed, but... Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that that was so... That was such a ride. That was such I a would, ride. I'm like, oh, I just got, like, a, a breath of relief that he was still alive. Because in my head, I was like, you know, uh, he's the Batman. Like, he's he could survive. You know, he could find a way to you know, escape to, like, the fate out. of... Yeah, of dying like th- like going out that way but then also uh, i was thinking like maybe for him like it would be the honorable thing to do it's like call it there yeah. and just let the bat like let the whole identity of the batman just die yeah at that moment for you know whatever yeah. reason and and maybe because like part of like i thought like maybe part of him feels like he's uh somewhat to blame for all of the evil yeah all of the like madness that befalls gotham with these you know uh villains yeah with these villains but then but then also he's the one that saves them which is the irony but but this lady like she was just after what's her name talia talia yeah um talia was just after getting revenge and fulfilling her father's wishes so right Right. uh, like oh it's just so crazy but i was so like as soon as i saw alfred sitting there at the cafe i was like he's there yeah i was like oh and he's there and i'll be so happy that just to see his face and 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 see him with a girl but i didn't think yeah i didn't think that the cat woman girl was gonna be the girl but (laughs) <laughs> yeah. And and I think it was perfect because it's just like Alfred wanted, you know, like he just wants to know that Bruce Wayne is all right. But what are your thoughts? No, oh, I don't know. Like I don't know if I'm going to be able to get through this because look, um I just have to preface this by saying that I've been going through like my personal experiences with like spiritual awakening and you know, whatever you want to call it, like it's not necessarily a religious thing, but it's just through like meditation. I've been doing something called kundalini yoga which is like a kundal like it's a form of meditation that helps you like raise your energy and your vibration and you have to pass through you know l- like blockages in your body and the soul has to rise to its its purpose which is becoming and fulfilling its role as as an extension or a part of divinity which is when you reach the the um crown chakra and it's kind of hard to explain but if you know what i'm saying then you know what i'm saying um I'm not going to make this about that, but a lot of the things that are taught and also like this, this thing called Kundalini yoga and Kundalini meditation, the rise of your soul and your spirit, it is echoed throughout every religion, you know, um, 
and it's the whole idea of like the 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 chosen one rises and rises from the dead is resurrected um and then serves as a beacon of hope for the rest of us that we can also achieve that state it's 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 not necessarily just a salvation trope but it's more so of like a tool a guide a step-by-step understanding that it is possible to achieve that level of virtue and the ultimate level of virtue is sacrifice and that's why batman had to die it's like the batman is dead but that doesn't mean that the man Mm -hmm. bruce wayne is dead so his soul actually transcended this this um vehicle that he was using in order to um in order to put this message out there which is a message of hope which is what every religion champions and every religion has their prophets and their and their messiahs and their spiritual leaders and their buddhas and their christ and their you know it just goes on and on and it's all a symbol of hope but they're all represented as human because that potential for for salvation lies within each man it's like it's within you you know it's your soul just like when he was in the pit the the prison doctor said that it's the soul it's like the soul has to be the one that that makes the jump and that just hit me like a like a train because that's what i've been learning from my own experiences and i've been discovering a lot about the world through introspection and through meditation and it echoes in everything i see like everything i'm seeing recently is a manifestation of that and that makes me understand that this is an absolute truth it's like the soul is an absolute truth that's why you watch these movies that's why people are fans that's why these films become cult classics because it's an inner knowing it's a resonance it's like it's not your rational mind that is that is like resonating with this information because a lot of you guys who watch movies like this like you guys don't even like expect things like this you know like it's not like your mind is like going into it and like preparing emotional triggers and activating it at like at the right times it's your soul it's your inner knowing that just sees this beautiful act and then is reminded of its own potential and then your body cries because it just it overtakes it with just emotion you know and so like look halfway through the movie um maybe like three-fourths way through the movie i was understanding bane like i i genuinely understand bane bane represents what in hindu culture for example they believe in the yugas right and they believe that we are in the kali yuga the kali yuga is the final step which is like the worst step apparently and it's a it's a precursor and it leads up to transformative change that kind of resets the world you know because during the kali yuga phase is like we have what we have now it's it's um it's corruption, it's it's power hungriness, it's um, consumerism, it's disloyalty, it's uh, envy, just all of the negative traits of humanity. And and this movie is a criticism on that, you know, but then it shows also this. The reason I say three fourths the way it's because like towards the the last like 25 minutes kind of um, I understood that even Talia and even Bane their methods were not virtuous Mm -hmm. their their ideas are kind of like kind of semi like kind of make sense no like it does make sense it's like they're trying to just do us a favor humanity a favor which is rid us of this disease that that we deem to be an advanced civilization you know there's so much hurt and pain and disconnect people are living in like little apartments piled on top of each other in the concrete jungle disconnected from nature disconnected from the human essence which is the human nature like this need to be in like walking on grass barefoot hug a tree like do even if it sounds hippie but it's like you are of this world you know and then you create your own little concrete little bubble and then you convince yourself that that's progress but it's not progress and there have been a few resets in the past, allegedly, you know, like there ha- like there have been floods. There have been, you know, there's uh, water erosion on the Sphinx, you know, like there's ideas of lost civilizations like Atlantis. And, and the list goes on and on. And the ancient Egyptians, like they, like they're, the pyramids are, have all those hieroglyphs kind of like teaching us. And it's built in stone so that it outlasts 
um, whatever cataclysm comes because this world, what people don't understand, and I can't force it down anybody's throat. And so even if you don't agree, feel free to comment, feel free to just fill the comments with a, like hate speech and just like say that this is whatever, but because it doesn't matter to me, honestly, but, um, but this whole life is cyclical. It's just a wheel. It's, it's the wheel of life. It goes in phases. And so humanity constantly fails to understand that advancement is getting closer to love, hope, connection, and reconnecting with your inner knowing, with your soul, with your inner child. There's a reason why Talia, the child out of this prison of men who are just resentful for their predicament, for being in that prison, you know, like they use the harness, they rely on safety nets. Nobody is courageous enough to make the jump, to make the jump truly and fully. Nobody's courageous enough. And the only thing that will make that jump and will be able to accomplish it is someone that is pure of soul. Mm -hmm. And that's why they chose a child to like represent that jump. And in Kundalini Yoga, like they, it, it's taught that you must purify and you must be a forgiving being, a loving being, someone who, who, who is just pure, is like childlike, you know, like someone who is, who is, um, who has rid themselves of anger, resentment, all of these just low frequency emotions that humans, you know, still use on a daily day, uh, on a daily basis. And so I just found that so like, so powerful, you know, like that's why he made it. And, and then once he made it, like, here's the beautiful thing, right? It's like, let's just get, um, let's just get, because I, I, I hate bringing religion into this, but, but it's like, I have no other choice but to do this. Right. And it doesn't, uh, it, it, it gets so complicated because like even talking about things like during the spiritual awakening, it's so hard to communicate with people, with the world, with, with, with strangers, who don't know me on any personal level, who just see what I, what I present on camera. It's like, it's hard to get you guys to empathize or to at least be open to ideas, you know, because people are so quick to say like, no, that's wrong. This and this, and this book says that it's like this, but these are things that I felt with my soul during this process that I've been going through. And my whole point is just like, take like Jesus, for example, right? Jesus was, in the text, he was a man who achieved Christ consciousness, who achieved enlightenment, who purified his soul, who elevated through and, and, and transcended this like meat vessel and understood that, 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 you know, like things that other people around him can't understand because they're too focused on this material realm, which is a, a realm of illusion, you know, like the true pure realm is the realm of the soul. And so we're just avatars. And that's why you know, like, 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 like people just, I don't know. I don't know. But then my point is that by, by Bruce Wayne rising from the dead, just like Jesus, just like a Messiah, like Jesus, he rises from the dead. And then he also r raises all of the people around him because he throws a rope. Mm -hmm. So everybody sees that it's possible. And so even in the lowest point, Bruce Wayne showed these people that there's hope. You know, and then hope in this hell on earth became legend. And that's when you know that you're so far gone is when hope becomes legend. It's a thing of legend. Like, has anyone ever made that jump? Oh, it is told in the legend. You know, but then he just shows that it's possible. And then he saves those those around him. And then he saves the city of Gotham. And so, well, all I'm trying to say is that Talia and Bruce, no, Talia and, and um, Bane, they had a, a honorable idea, I'd say. It's like they're just trying to purify the world, they're, which is, which again, like I might get a lot of shit for it, but really just like, bear, like try to follow, like just try to listen to what I'm saying and don't like, you know, like act on that instinct of just attacking someone's idea. It's like, just try to be like patient, just like children, like they listen, you know, it's like, but but Talia and Bane, they wanted to w establish a clean slate so that hopefully humanity would be able to try again. And then hopefully they would be able to achieve a state of, of peace, of advancement, of the soul, of the human nature, of love. But the reason why I stopped believing that it would work was because 
they were acting out of prophecy. They were acting out of like honoring someone else's idea. And so when you start honoring someone else's idea, it will never work. It has to always come from your innate knowing and your innate wanting. And then you can start, you know, acting in the world and things will work for you if you act with passion. You know, like that's why we're taught in school. Follow your passions, follow your dreams. You know, like these are these are things that are age old, like like people would have dreams of what they would like what their purpose on this earth was. And then they would follow those dreams. But capitalism has made it so that they give you the options of what the dreams can be. So one does not follow their dreams, but instead picks out of the options that are pre-established for them. So the options are you could be a doctor, you could be an engineer, you could be a soccer player, you could be a football player. Like, what do you want to be, kiddo? It's like, no, like, that's not how it works. That's not how life works. And so am I making sense? Yeah. And so... Like, even the way Talia spoke, right, like, they all spoke in a very religious manner. And I'm sure that even that, um, that, that, um, Captain Cop guy who was initially, like, a douche and then he was, like, cowardly and stuff. But then in the end, he, he fought a honorable battle and he died as a warrior. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. You said even him, cause, like, speaking religiously. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. So, so even his name is Peter. Right. Like I've I've never fully read the Bible, but I'm sure that Peter is one a character of, in the one Bible. One of God's most loyal disciples, I think. Right. So yeah. and then Talia at the end when she's about to die and she's taking her last breath, she says that she's just fulfilling and honoring her father's work. Mm -hmm. So it's the work of the father. You know, it's the work of the grand architect of the grand creator, whatever you want to ascribe to. It doesn't matter because I believe I truly believe this that every religion has its way of being right. But a lot, like every religion, in my opinion, again, here I will, like here I go, just burying myself a hole, but every religion also kind of gets it wrong by externalizing this belief that salvation is external, that you have to worship things and, and people that are exterior of yourself. You're supposed to view these people and these prophets and these teachers and you're supposed to understand that they are showing you that that there's the potential for salvation that you have to act as they do. And that's why in the Bible, for example, Jesus says, do do as I do. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like, act as I do. And it, Jesus says that the kingdom of God is within every man. It's like it's there. It, it, it Like it is there. Like I'm not making stuff. Up. I'm not pulling stuff out of my butt. You know, like it's not it's it's not what I'm doing. But, yeah, I just found it so profound. And then at the end, like Batman saves them, but then it's like he didn't really save them. He didn't really save them because those people, sure, like they're going to learn, like they're going to remember that, but then eventually they're going to forget and then they're going to go back to their normal lives. And then now there's Robin, you know, there's a new vigilante, but Robin's still going to fight the next bad guy because there's always going to be a villain, you know, because you are in this environment that kind of enables it and it's an in, like it's an inevitability so you didn't really save anyone because you're still you know like it's still going to be the same thing nothing changes you know so maybe there's a possibility that if if the whole city had collapsed excuse me maybe that would have worked you know to like teach humanity a lesson it's like the fall of babylon you know the tower of babel it's like it's just a fall collapse of it, you know, like man builds this empire, builds this tower and extends it to the heavens and tries to prove a point to the gods or 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 to God that they are also capable and that they are also able to reach the level of the gods. And then it just gets, you know, like there's like symbolism there. I'm not taking anything literal, but there's like things to be learned, you know. So, yeah, so it's a very tricky thing because I don't think anybody won in this i think that the person that won was alfred i think that mr fox won i think that people win in ways but nobody ever wins completely mm. and i think that bruce win uh bruce wayne bruce, <laughs> bruce win. win bruce wins um i think that bruce wayne won in ways where like he did what he had to do like like he fulfilled his purpose like he established himself as hope and his sacrifice will echo for eternity he 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 becomes like a real thing like a symbol of hope and he inspires other people to act as he did. So I think that that is 
the key here. It's like you can't save the entire world at once is all I'm trying to say. And I'm sorry because all of this is new to me. It's like it's a whole experience and I still haven't really like been able to put it into words. But but yeah, like you can't save everybody all at once. Like all you could do is just show that it's possible and then you let the individuals who are smart enough to discern those teachings like Robin, like 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 Blake and people who resonate on a deep level. And then that's it. Yeah. 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 But it's interesting because Batman had told Blake to take on a mask, ba- like essentially. Um, and then Blake responded saying, like, I'd rather sh- like be show my face and stuff. Like, I'd rather do my work like with like with my face or or whatever. However, he put it because I didn't write that part down, I don't think. Mm-hmm. But then at the end he ditches his badge and then that's when he you Mm. know takes on this new persona and i think that Mm. it's i think that he realized that cops and detectives sure they they do their part but then maybe even seeing those cops across the bridge Mm -hmm. follow orders right because that's what they were doing they were following orders and they burnt the bridge. So under yeah. pressure, they crack. Under pressure, they 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 have to follow what they're told and do what they're told, and then that's it. But if he if he isn't a part of the force, then he has the liberty to do what he really feels is right, mm-hmm. which is in his heart of hearts, which is what Batman is. And so that's why he ditches his badge, and then that's why he becomes Robin. And I feel like that part like it's a great point what what you're just saying because like those police officers all they know is how to follow orders it's like we've been conditioned ever since we're like babies we go through preschool and then we go through traditional schooling which was designed by the rockefeller rothschild families you know to produce you know good obedient workers factory workers at the time and we haven't changed it at all like it's still organized in the same way like it's organized in a way where it's not stimulating free thinking it's stimulating um absorb like absorbing information it's just like you know instilling propaganda in your head and just you know like forcing order yeah yeah like it's not an environment that 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 invites creativity or out of the box thinking like it's not but then my point is like People who are involved with being part of the um, part of part of the the like part of society that's responsible for protecting us, and this is not at all like diminishing their value because they're they're the most important in my opinion. Like they have to maintain some form of just stability, you know. Otherwise, everything will just implode on itself. But my point is, receiving orders. That's all they could do, meaning like they can't think for themselves. Like, they have no connection with their inner knowing. Like, like they have no intuition. It's like they see an obvious thing. Like, they know deep down that they shouldn't do it. But then it's the rational mind. It's the it's the human system that just, like, takes over. It's like, robot, I am commanded to destroy right, but, it. But the same thing with, like, the hostages on the back of the bikes. It's it's not like there was hostages on, on every back of every right, bike. And right. then even that stops them from going to shoot the tires which is like the instinctual thing to do it's like oh shoot down the tires we'll like we'll stop them but then their 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 orders are you can't risk the lives of any civilians which which makes sense but then everything comes back to them having to follow orders so you can't do it any other way and so the batman has more liberty and more freedom to just do do as he does Mm -hmm um in his own way but then that obviously required him training and him having like his uh his like super advanced technologies but yeah anyways that's all I yeah think. yeah I, I, and um it's this whole idea too that that like bane's men were trained like they were trained vigorously trained under this one thing that was purposeful like it was a vision it was a purpose like there's you know thought that that goes in through it, like that goes into it and so each man it does still take orders but at the same time like they're more i guess just object what i'm trying to say is that 
humanity's evolution has just like built up to a point where where we just give so much value into risk management and i feel like that is it like is a form of shooting ourselves in the foot you know because too much risk management which is what they showed with the harness and with like having no net like like no safety net like nothing like no rope to hold you down or to avoid your death like risk management is what keeps us back and so it's this idea that you can't shoot a gang of five motorcyclist and you know even if one of them has no hostage and you have a clear shot of the wheel yeah like that person could have just shot the wheel and then got that guy and then the government does what it does with its um torturing techniques and then gets you know gets information gets answers and then that's it yeah but as a result is just it's just ideas that control us you know it's like things that we're taught it's like what do you do in this like in this situation what's the right answer you don't <laughs> Nope. Yeah. You do not engage. Correct. Do not engage. No matter how much. It's like, no, like it's, you know, mm -hmm. it's like there's like a but 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 at the same time, I get it, you know, because you have to have risk like risk assessment in order right. to manage a hierarchy of command. Yeah. So it's very tricky. Um, There was a thing that they said, right, about <coughs> um, since you were talking about the harness and stuff and and him like climbing out the the doctor right the prison doctor was mm -hmm. the guy was saying that basically that pain well this is how i interpreted it it's not exactly what he said but that pain is what drives people that is what drove the what we know is the girl talia um to climb out of that hole with no rope no nothing and then that people born from privilege, which he didn't say it this exact way, but it's how I interpreted it. But that people born from privilege, it's harder for them to adapt. And and I'm saying that I interpreted it that way because I, I didn't write down exactly what he said. Mm -hmm. But basically that 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 little girl who was born in that hole. Right. And mm -hmm. and loses her mother. And is just there in this like in this hell, essentially, which is what they called it. She all she has is hope, which is essential, which is what he said. Mm -hmm. And and all she has is fear of what she's been, you know, accustomed to. And then all she has is just, you know, this this thing that she has to do. You know, it's just like your yeah. duty to do it. But then my point is that his statement about privileged people is that and and why I said it's harder for them to adapt is when you are privileged and you grow up in this like bubble, right? Like in this um uh comfort even. Like mm -hmm. you don't you don't really have to adapt to the discomfort uh, of life. Right, the 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 trials and tribulations that come with like pain and suffering. Mm. And so Bruce Wayne in that moment hadn't undergone true like internal well well that's not fair to say but he had to be willing to to he had to be so scared to die in that hole mm. essentially yeah but also so, so like confident in himself and 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 in ma like in making that jump like n just like uh i it's take really hard time. to explain take your time just like take your time breathe but then There's yeah no rush. uh but anyways like my point is that uh, my point is just that it's like like it's like the the intensity of fear kind of drives you out of you know out of whatever circumstance that you're in essentially yeah yeah and and i think that it, it's also important to to note that bruce wayne had to lose everything before he would gain the world back yeah so that's another lesson that um you know like you learn through meditation it's like you have to kind of learn how to let go and letting go does not mean that you become disconnected with the world necessarily but it means that you aren't attached to it so even to like loved ones you know like even to your own family it's like you have to make peace with death and i think that that's what it is is that they 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 portrayed it here as like fear as like a a necessary thing because that's what it manifests itself in our bodies like that's where we manifest like it manifests as fear 
But that driving force is just this understanding that you can't afford to to die in hell right. while alive. So it's, it gets hard to explain. And again, like everybody, like anybody out there who understands what I'm saying, who has gone through a spiritual awakening, understands what I mean. It's like hell is here on earth. You know, like it's your frequency. It's your level of vibration. It's where your spirit lives. You know, if it lives in the lowest level of vibration where you every day consume pornography, every day you 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 are lustful, greedful, resentful, all of these low vibrational energies, like you're living in hell, you know, like that is hell. So if you die while living in that, then you never got to heaven because heaven is when you just let go of everything, you know, like you just learn to make peace with the world and you make peace with life and death because if you resort to the Tao, you know, like it says that, the the um Tao Te Ching it's like Lao Tzu said that uh like everything has its counter so you know in order to have darkness you have to have light in order to have light you have to have the absence of light you have to have darkness and so the world works in opposites everything is an opposite so even death has its opposite and we don't know what it is like we don't know what's after death but that's what they teach is that you have to just elevate yourself so that once death comes you are more prepared because you already established your kingdom in heaven, like you established your world, you build it while you are on earth. And again, I'm using the Bible because it's the most popular religion or it's one of the most popular, um, but I don't subscribe to any particular religion. I take from various places, like I take from Hinduism, uh, the Bible, I take from the Tao, like everything, because they all have similar teachings. And so even in the Bible, it says that, um, that deliver the kingdom, on earth as it is in heaven or something like that you know so it's here where we have to build and i don't even know where i'm going with this and it's called mentally gone it's just a stream of consciousness none of this is prepared obviously and it's just like i'm not perfect so um i just try to do my best to to always state that i respect every religion i respect every god every belief system i respect what everybody thinks because i respect everybody it's just i just respect it you know um, because everybody has their choice and we're humans and we have like that right it's it's a human right to have beliefs and to have choices in what you believe in and so what were you saying that i kind of oh that bruce wayne has to lose the world and so that's essentially what it is like his fear was in knowing that if he died there then everything he had done up until that point was in vain everything because he did all that hard work to end up back down so then he had to rise his spirit rose his soul rose into the light into the light he rose and then by going into the light he threw down a rope and and showed everybody else what the light has to offer and so you have to lose everything you have to lose everything. And then the opposite is what Bane was trying to destroy. It's just like in the Bible. It says again, because Christopher Nolan, I bet you a lot of these are, are, are like biblical references because it resonates with the world. Um, but I bet that Bane was trying to destroy the opposite of that, which is what is a man to gain the world but lose his soul. You know, so a soulless society that is that considers itself advanced, that considers itself the pinnacle of of what humanity has been able to do which is new york city you know like it's the it's the place where capitalism thrives so he goes inside of the stock exchange and he and he destroys these ideas of just money and greed and he mm -hmm. starts there and he disrupts it in a way that nobody expects you know and then he starts there like he he tries to t attack the cores which i think is a necessary way but i think that you have to do it through love and that sounds super hippie, you know, like all all I'm missing is the long hair and the glasses and stuff. But it is love. And I feel like that's what Batman did. So he saved the world through love, through selfless act of love, you know, willing to sacrifice himself if necessary. It just happened that he didn't Yeah, have to, you know. Uh, I figured out like what I was like kind of trying to say, but he was being driven by the fear of death but in his case it was the fear of dying in that place and <coughs> not dying where people needed him 
Yeah. You know, and, and basically what you're saying, it's like the the force of love gravitating him, the love that he has for the city of Gotham and the people in the city of Gotham. For Alfred. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Well, for yeah. Fox, for yeah. for Cat Lady, for everyone. But but yeah, that's like that's kind of what I was like trying to say before, and I couldn't get the words because I'm like yeah. just piecing it all together and then just like i said oh do you oh no go 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 ahead and then just like i said like while the um scene was was um happening where he and bane first fought head to head and then bane broke his back um bane said some beautiful things which is why like i was on team bane also like i was on everybody's team because everybody was kind of right you know, like there's hope and then there's this need to reset in hope that humanity prospers. And so there's still love for humanity. It's not like their their dream is to exterminate the whole planet. It's it's just like a message. It's like attack it at its core, you know, attack this cancer, this um cancerous nature that has taken over everybody's life. Everybody lives nine to five. Like how many of you guys watching wake up early, go to work, come back home, barely have time, spend whatever you have with your family wake up the next day, do the same thing, have no peace of mind, bills. And when you finally get a little bit of peace of mind, the news hits you with aliens, alien attacks, fires, catastrophes, disasters, politics. It's just always occupying yourself with these worldly matters. You, how much, how many times, like how much time do you have to just look like inwardly, like introspection? Like how, how well do you know yourself? How well can you speak on yourself? other than the identity that you've constructed through an accumulation of experiences and these ideas that you hold today, a lot of them aren't even your own because they've been just injected into your brain and they've been force fed onto you and by, by, by teachers, by family, trauma, generational trauma, generational belief, you know, like even religion, ways of being, ways of acting, how you walk, how you dress. It's all the idea of identity, but it's all an illusion. Right. Because even when you're growing up and you want to fit in at school and you want to buy the the uh, hot shoes that are in and you want to buy the T-shirt that's that's hot right now. And you want to be like the cool kid and you want to be like Zac Efron and you want to be like Vanessa Hudgens and you want to be like whatever is is hot. So it just goes back to the whole idea. It's like it's the it's the the illusion of options. We are all prisoners. We are all living in this in this prison, but it's disguised as liberated. It's disguised as you're a free being, but you're not. Because once you decide that you want to be a free being, you be, you become ostracized and you become, people scoff at you, people look at you. It's like, oh, like why aren't you rocking the new Nikes, dude? Like, Nike, you know, it's going to drop. Like, you, I, I got to hop on there. Like did, like, did you hear the new album that dropped? Oh, it's so far. It's like people just want to be included. And I forget who says this, but someone says that that inclusion is a hell of a drug. I think it was Nas the rapper Nas, I think he said that in a song, I forget which song it was, but he says that inclusion is a hell of a drug. And it's a drug that we're all high off of. And we are all addicts, addicts of inclusion, addicts of just copy and paste. And so there's no real humanity left. And that's why I kind of understood that. It's like Bane isn't wrong. He's not completely wrong. He is wrong in some ways, but he's also very right in other ways. But that's all to say, and I have to just speak very like I have to speak a lot because I have to just really make sure that I don't know that my idea gets across because I'm not trying to like force anything on anyone. I'm just like sharing my thoughts and my opinion as a human being who has lived 25 years on this earth. Like this is what I've accumulated. But his fa- uh, phrase that says, um, you think darkness is your ally. You've merely adopted the dark. Um, I was born in it molded by it i didn't see the light until i was a young man and all it was for me was blinding Mm. blinding it's like again just like you said like bruce wayne suffered terrible loss but 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 he didn't lose everything he had alfred he had his estate he had money he had a stable upbringing he had maids running around people answering doors for him it wasn't all that bad You know, like, it's horrible. I can't even imagine because I still have both my parents, even if they're divorced, even if they're kind of estranged, both of them from me at this moment in time, even if it's kind of just, you know, like, it's not the best relationship, but I can't imagine losing my parents. 
you know, like I can't imagine that feeling. But my point is like Bane was someone that was just so used to it, just so used to pain and darkness. And like, that's all he knew, all he knew. And he suffered his whole life, but then he just sacrificed himself just like Bruce Wayne did, sacrificed himself for humanity because children are the future. Children hold that pure light. And so this big guy just saw that maybe there's no hope for him, but there's hope for this child, you know, and this child might, you know, end up doing stuff. And then lo and behold, the child saved his life. So saving the inner child saves your own life, saves the man, saves, saves the, the savage, the beast, the animal. It's the soul. It's the purity. But yeah, and I don't know, like I'm sure there's a lot more. Um, from my notes here, I just wrote, uh, people only care when the mask is on. At, at the very beginning, Bane says that people never cared about who I was. It was only after I put on the mask or something along those lines. That was interesting. You know, it's like, it's very profound. I don't like, I don't know if I can really break it down right now. Cause I, cause I'm kind of used up my brain power on the other stuff. And it's pretty late. Like always, like we record super late. And then Selena equals cat burglar orphaned abandoned children of Gotham are recruited for Bane. Yeah. That, that was very powerful. Um, criticism too on, on Christopher Nolan's part is that the orphaned children think about this. In advanced and developed society has has a place for orphan children, but these orphan children can only stay there until a certain age. So there's, you know, they have the illusion of like security, of being sheltered, but it's just an illusion, you know, like they like they keep them there. But then at 16, like they have the choice to leave probably. And when they leave, they fall right into the sewers they they fall into the lowest level of society and then they become kind of susceptible to the ways of the sewer which is the way of bane which is the way of ideological possession it's the way of just of just any purpose will do because when you're in the sewers it's like it doesn't matter if someone's offering you a job to sell drugs it doesn't matter if someone's offering you a job to you know explode a nuclear reactor th bomb thing you know like it it doesn't matter like you'll just go with it because you desperately crave purpose because that's what every human needs and so my point is that like it's the same with like prisons you know like we, people go to prison and then they get out and they don't like they don't learn anything if anything it makes them worse you know because prison is designed in a very screwed up way in my opinion prisons are designed to make people worse so that when they're released into the world, just like Bane showed, and again, this is a criticism on Christopher Nolan's behalf, I, I imagine, um, the release of the prisoners and giving them weapons and giving them powerful weapons and making them worse than they were before, making them more resentful, more filled with hatred, and giving them like motivation to like take it out on the people who oppress them, mm. that is not the way towards advancement. Advancement is what Bruce Wayne did with Selina. He forgave her. He just smiled. She betrayed him, just like Judas did, right? I think it's Judas' his name. Yeah, Judas. Judas pointed out Jesus, and then Jesus was, you know, crucified by the Romans, right, or something like that. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, guys, but again, I'm I'm not very well versed, but but essentially like a traitor. But then Jesus forgave Judas as well, you know, and then Bruce forgives, and so it's like, it's all these lessons. It's just forgiveness. Holding on to that emotional baggage won't help you elevate into your purpose and stand and walk with divinity walk with god in your life and so yeah like like bane's intentions were still very resentful and that's why it never worked and it would never have worked and neither was talia's because talia's passions and vision for the world weren't her own and so they were just again just like a an idea that was just instilled in her through generations like through her father but um yeah and then releasing the prisons and they're just worse off and they're worse than ever like that's just a criticism on the modern jail system and then the other thing is a criticism in my opinion of the um orphan system yeah oh um and then cops hunt batman versus bane that part was so like it's filled with like little criticism and like that's why i love this movie because i feel like i was having a conversation with christopher nolan like i was grabbing coffee or grabbing a beer with him 
and we were just like sitting down and he was just like telling me stories of like hypotheticals you know like oh like this is why this is wrong because imagine you know there's a batman and then this happens mm, yeah but the part where batman returns and um all the cops kind of forget about bane mm-hmm. and they just redirect their energy towards pers- like towards prosecuting hope this symbol of hope which is another like very subtle criticism about what happens to every single person who kind of becomes becomes a beacon of hope they get killed by governments they get suppressed they get oppressed they get you know burnt at the stake like it just goes on and on and so you can't really speak words that resonate with the soul too much because if you do that then you become a target then you get on a list and then all of society, all of the powers that be, they start following you and they start prosecuting you and they start, um, yeah, just, just keeping tabs on you. I actually had that same thing written down, like all of the cops for a man who only supposedly killed um, Harvey Dent versus yeah. a man who was holding like all of these innocent people hostage. But then the thing that I wanted to point out and note that that's important is that it's because of just how highly they built up harvey dent yes. and so they put importance on this on this one person harvey dent for eight years even mm. like eight years later they put all of this importance on harvey um harvey dent and who who killed him we still have to figure it out even eight years later they're still because of just how highly they they built up his like reputation and and he he was the symbol of hope so to them it's like this this batman vigilante stole that from them Mm. so batman wasn't the symbol of hope but there is an envy towards or or whatever it is towards batman uh, resentment or whatever because he claimed to have been saving and helping but then in their eyes all they saw was was this thing that they did which is kill harvey dent and so in their eyes he was doing the complete opposite like he was the cause for chaos he was the cause for um just destruction of gotham which is a great uh, criticism on just how powerful narratives are right and so my point is like that we see that in reality right where mm-hmm. there's so much importance on like um what gets attention and usually what gets attention is these relevant things and these relevant people versus like these things that actually need the attention you know what i'm saying yeah and so that was the same scenario it's like they're they're chasing one guy who killed Harvey Dent eight years ago, mm-hmm. the first minute that they see him, first second, and they do it like spitefully, like, let's go get him and whatever, and they all hawk and flock towards him. Yeah. Versus this guy who in this present moment was holding people hostage, literally risking multiple lives. He shot up the stock sh- exchange. Sh- yeah, which shooting is a things up, crime. You can't escaping spin. them, like in that moment, everything, right? Mm hmm and and that and they don't even like bat an eye they're just like oh let that let that one go and but i think that that's like a testament to an extent of like what like how bad like gotham city is in terms of crime at times it's like they they probably are used to robbers and 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 people doing this type of thing and maybe they didn't understand the full extent of what bane was doing mm. but to them he was just a robber he was just like a burglar or whatever and then they just like brushed it off. It's like no, the murderer is more important than the burglar. Yeah. Even though this burglar was like risking lives, but then my point is like that's a testament to how, how like messy Gotham is too. Because um, if it if it hadn't been the case, then they would divide their attention. You know, right, like right. they would want to stop all the crime, but because crime probably happens so much like we saw it the prison is full these people are are like the prisoners are like riled up and stuff um but because it happens so often they just have to choose Mm. what they give their attention to so it's not like they can divide it or they could have divided it but they choose yeah you know they're picky about yeah yeah and that's why i like i generally think that this movie is perfect obviously nothing's perfect like there you'll always find like things to poke at but that's just a way of saying that it touches on almost every criticism for society, like the most important ones, right? Because that scene, and I feel a burp coming up. Hold on. 
<laughs> uh, it's just like gas builds up in my stomach when I'm talking. I don't know why. I think I might have like some medical condition. I don't know if you guys have that at all. If you do, let me know because I don't go to the doctor at all. <laughs> and I probably should. But um, so that idea, right? Like like Captain Peter. I don't even know if he's a captain of the police department. But the guy, Peter, he was riding with um Blake in the car. And he's the one that ordered all of the force to pursue the Batman. Yeah. And I think that that was showing that fame is what we value. Mm. It's fame. Yeah. It's being idolized. It's being portrayed as a like as a hero because society operates off of stories it's stories that we tell ourselves you know brands brands marketing is all about storytelling you know it's like what story are you going to tell these humans the story is that you're going to be a happier person have a happy family have a beautiful husband and wife and children if you buy stuff from walmart and you get it delivered to your door look how beautiful this life is beautiful house it's not too luxurious but it's attainable you know like let's make them feel like they can actually attain it let's not make it too uh, but then you have like lamborghini and then you have ferrari rolex commercials and then that's more like our, our target audience is this what story do we tell and so it's just storytelling so my point is that like a lot of years eight years of conditioning programming building up this false idol this this um story this narrative and then you have people brainwashed and conditioned to blindly follow that story trope and s follow that story arc but my whole point is that captain peter he's the type that in the first half of the movie he wanted just fame and respect and recognition and so yeah. he was still pursuing these like superfluous uh qualities i guess of existence and he said it he was like i want to be the one to, to take, take the batman down it's right. like that would have been like a, a badge of honor for him you know it's yeah. like he took down the so even that was like selfish it's like it, it had selfish, nothing yeah. to do with like no. harvey dent actually passing it was about mm -hmm. the recognition that he would receive he would become the next harvey dent the next like recognizable exactly. figure he would be the face mm. that people would make tales and folklore he his name would be chanted across lands right it's like that's what we've always wanted or a lot of us are born like that because he defeated the big bad villain yes. right because that's what batman ends up getting painted out as and he would overthrow commissioner gordon because right. he even said that he said like i'm gonna do what commissioner gordon never did yeah should have done like yeah. eight years ago should have done and then he wants his job and he wants all the recognition he wants the praise he wants the the everything you know and and, and so like exactly that it's just it's just fame. It's like that's all we want. It's all selfish. Uh, yeah, and to your point about fame, right? When 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 Bruce Wayne pulls up in his uh what is it? A Lamborghini <laughs> or whatever? Lamborghini, yeah. He pulls up in his Lamborghini, but he's crippled. The paparazzi's initial reaction is to laugh like and and make a comment, a sly comment about, "Oh, look, it's a cripple coming out of the uh sports car," right? But then when they realized that it's Bruce Wayne, that switched like automatically. Yeah. It was like, oh, it's Bruce Wayne. It's yeah. like the this like concept of, of fame. So like being a, a well-known figure automatically gains you like this uh, weird this, world. like re respect points, you know, um, and and if not, like if you're just like a regular human being, like even someone who's crippled, who's literally like handicapped um doesn't like that doesn't garner just decency you yeah, know yeah. human decency and so these people like just like you said it's like prioritizing and kind of um making fame yeah. the important thing and then also having a story so everything is like selfish like even those paparazzi it's like a cripple coming out of a sports car ah you yeah. like we saw that last week you know maybe you know just just like making a joke yeah. But then seeing Bruce Wayne, who no one has seen in eight years, that's a story. Let's sell that to the tabloids. Yeah. Like, let's get that on camera. Especially when you consider that these paparazzis, they get paid handsomely for, like, right. pictures, like, like rare pictures of certain celebrities. So that's why they stalk them like crazy and they go to crazy extents to just, take like, get a shot. What I wanted to say also is it, it also made a criticism on the lack of transparency of politicians so when the mayor was going to watch the game in the midst of a crisis yeah. that was take the uh, like unfolding in his city you know like the mayor was just doing all this just to create this uh, 
again, a narrative. It's just a training exercise, guys. Don't worry. Don't be alarmed. Just a, I'm I'm gonna go watch my team. Okay, it's like, and then and then walks in and goes watch his team and then dies. Um, I also wanted to say how interesting it is that we all pledge allegiance to the flag. We all feel united in the moment when that song is being sung. We all are in a trance of the words, of the voice, of the sound. But then once the song is over, we just resort back to our individual lives yeah. and our individualistic tendencies. And that's why Bain said, Gotham, reclaim your city. Mm -hmm. It's like all of you here, like what's wrong? Reclaim it. Do something about it. You can't. You can't because you've grown comfortable, you know? And he told Batman that too. He said that peace has make has made you weak. Mm. Ha has like ve weakened you and victory has blinded you or something like that. Yeah. But that part I found really interesting because we all are unified in the voice, you know? Like the voice is very powerful. And the like you don't have to be a somebody to have a voice. And your voice, even if you're a nobody can mean something to someone and that's what ha has happened with us it's like it's it it's nothing short of a miracle that our channel has 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 garnered this amount of attention you know like it has garnered this amount of viewers and like and like it's beyond baffling like i still can't really wrap my head like head around it because we're nobodies but we have a voice and yeah. so that voice means something to someone and it just happens that it's a lot of someone's and so it's just interesting. Like it's very interesting. It's like a philosophical debate, really. It's, it's um, it's the illusion. It's like we want to be connected so bad that when we pledge allegiance, like we get emotional because we hear everybody's voice in union and at, like as one, or we hear this one voice, you know, that's just singing and it's a child's voice too. Like it was very important that Christopher Nolan put another child there. It's the child's voice. It's the it's the voice of an angel. Yeah. And then everybody's just in awe, just like crying and stuff um but yeah mm. oh no if you have oh I, I just meant like if you have more notes like you you could oh. keep going yeah um i do want to say that the um pastor the pastor that 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 was with blake the uh father that's responsible for the orphanage he gave up like he was so ready to give up mm. right like he's the one that just said like it's over, Blake. Like, there's no more hope. Yeah. You know, and it's just so ironic. Like, like again, Christopher Nolan did everything not by coincidence. There are no coincidences, and he even said it. Um, well, s someone's Gordon told Blake when he promoted him to detective that there's no coincidences. That now, as a detective, which is what we should all be, by the way, we should investigate everything. Consider all possibilities. There are no coincidences. There are only synchronicities. Everything is perfect in the way that it is, you know, you know, like all, all you have to do is just look at nature, like look at the patterns on a flower, on like leaves, um, things in nature, how animals behave. Everything is perfect because it's made by God. It's just made by this creator, you know, like this grand ar um, architect. But my point is that the religious pastor, the religious leader was very quick to just renounce his, his worldly existence. And he was quick to, um, exercise that decision on kids yeah. who have futures you know so the futures of other humans and i found that interesting you know because a lot of people follow religion blindly and a lot of times you know like it's not perfect yeah it's not perfect am i boring you no you no tired yeah oh, okay. but 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 i was gonna uh, make a comment about that too like blake was the one um kind of a and i think it's because he he can understand from their shoes mm. like quite literally like he was an orphaned kid too yeah and so he was able to understand like what they needed yeah. in that sense and not this like pastor who um maybe does it for you know righteous points or whatever the case is like he doesn't truly he can't truly comprehend no, what it can't. is that they need yeah if yeah. that makes sense yeah yeah and then bruce wayne had to um even like even if he didn't do it willingly he had to put himself in the shoes of his enemy which is what he did which is the only way to conquer an enemy is by learning 
the enemy inside out. So it's from the inside out that you understand and you conquer something. So you have to put yourself in um, in in Bane's shoes, and that's where he went. And so that's why after he did that, he was able to beat Bane, essentially. Like, he was able to establish an upper hand, and he learned Bane's weaknesses because he went inside of Bane's soul, inside of his upbringing, inside of his history, inside of his past, inside of his soul. And he understood that he has weaknesses, that he is just a man, you know? And then that's when he came back and he started targeting his weak points. And then, and then he got the upper hand because at first he, he, like, he was probably terrified because everybody's terrified, just like everybody's terrified of the Batman. And so it was just very interesting because he got a taste of his own medicine too. Mm. Like this movie's about that. Like when Selena disappeared and then he's like, oh, so that's what it feels like. It's like, yeah. And then when he meets Bane, Bane is just there like standing Bane isn't fearful because Bane knows Batman because, you know, he was taught by the League of Shadows, even if he was whatever, like, 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 like he knows Batman and Batman doesn't know Bane. He just knows like Intel that that superficial that Alfred gathered. But then once he understands and knows who Bane was, knows his story, then then he comes back. And then even in that scene where like Batman climbs those steps first he has the higher ground, like he has the upper hand advantage, like it shows visually, cinematically, it shows that ascension above the enemy, you know? You know what I just realized? Um, I realized that they had that little funeral for Bruce Wayne when they thought that he died, right? Like Mm -hmm. Alfred and and, uh, Gordon and stuff. Um, Because... And and I just realized it, which sounds so stupid, but nobody, still nobody knows that it's Bruce Wayne that's Batman. So yeah. that wasn't revealed to to the world that oh, Bruce Wayne is Batman who sacrificed himself for mm. you guys. So that's why it was like right. a private event. And so that's why Batman, like the Batman, is recreated in a statue form. And then um, there's all cameras and there's right. a public. And, and there is no like there is no funeral for Bruce Wayne. And I think that that's like very important too. like um, Bruce Wayne is needed for the people close to him. Mm-hmm. Just like Alfred said, it's like I need I need you, Bruce Wayne. And that's what the people need is Bruce Wayne. Um, but 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 really, it's like that like that part of him has to be preserved if that makes sense and then batman is like it needs to be batman to serve as the beacon of hope to be like to serve as the symbol right because because like when you're creating a hero like you like you have to strike a perfect balance and like figure it out it's like a perfect balance between the humanity and the supernatural godlike essence of that s- hero because that's what the hero is it's a manifestation of a godlike essence and so that's why you know uh people that paint up like image like images and like stories of these like saviors and these like messiahs and these prophets they all had like powers like they could walk on water they can heal people so you have to like establish that but then at the same time you 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 have to create them in in like in your own image so that it kind of like reminds you that that thing is also human yeah you know and so if that's human if that person being human could achieve that then i being human can also maybe achieve you know a path that leads to that understanding that yeah. leads to that virtue to that life that's lived in virtue and then the last part that i have here is um plato's cave equals the uh the hell prison i think that that's exactly what the analogy is um i don't know how many of you guys are familiar with the analogy of the cave but it's the idea that that humans are born inside of a cave and that on the walls of the caves there are shadows being casted and we are born and we are kind of forced to sit crisscross um and just like staring at the wall and just observing these like shadows that are being casted but we can't really turn around to understand or to see for ourselves who and what is casting those shadows we're just supposed to just our whole lives just 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 like watch these shadows and then understand that this is the world that this is the entirety of the world but then some people they are able to understand and like come to a realization through introspection and through just 
discernment and through just independent thinking and courage that comes with that with just being ostracized and being called crazy for thinking outside of the box and thinking outside of the hive mentality someone realizes that these are just shadows that if these are shadows then there has to be a actual thing that's ca- that that's casting you know that that is responsible for that shadow and that's where plato proposed the idea of world of forms you know that everything is in an in imperfect representation of what exists in the divine realm in the world of god but my point is that someone all it takes is one person to stand up in like a row of people just sitting crisscross applesauce looking at the wall and just being so entertained in awe like new, like like movies that come out and you know news tragic news and we're always just so so consumed by all these things that are like passing by and then we forget that if we just decide to get up, turn around, step over the people who are casting the shadows, and then make our way out towards the light, we realize that there's a light source, and that light source is the way out. And so you get out of the cave, and then you realize that there's a real world outside of that. And then that one person that stands up, someone in that line notices, sees it out of the corner of their eye, and then it's like, huh? I didn't know we could do that, you know? It's mm-hmm. like, all right, so I'm going to try myself and then and then it's like a domino effect. Yeah. But that's what that prison was for me because of the fact that he threw down the rope and up until that point it was just a thing of legend to those people. Like they kept trying and trying but nobody really tried with soul. You know, like they were all just frustrated people who just wanted to get out for their own selfish purposes, but Bruce Wayne needed to get out in order to save the world right so he had no choice but to act with his soul because he was acting with his soul everybody else was just selfish it's like i want to be the one to do it again just like the cop with with like fame Mm -hmm. seeking fame seeking to be part of the legend but yeah there's way more to that to life i feel and if you really like listen to everything i've said and you really like give it a chance you'll see that it's not it's not anything bad I'm not saying anything bad. I'm just like, you know, it like these are just ideas, just like movies are ideas. You know, this is all coming out of one person's head, you know, or two people's head. I saw that he wrote this with his brother, it looks like, because he's also, last name is Nolan. I don't know. But yeah, um, so comment below what you think about that, because I do read all the comments and I will be responding to to people who want to have like a real conversation about all this and just really talk about it because i feel like we have to start talking about things and that and that these movies like they are made to remind us of our innate purpose as 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 like as as souls spiritual beings having a human experience is what i view it yeah but yeah for sure and that's all i have um i'm gonna go quick through mine and then we'll wrap it up but i thought that I wrote this like right from the beginning (coughs) that Alfred would eventually tell um, Bruce about the letter from Rachel Mm -hmm. um, because he was like talking about like, oh, you should move on and you should make a life for yourself. And I would think, you know, when he said that he would sit down at that cafe and picture that for eight years and picture that Bruce would be there with a woman and have started a life and left Gotham behind and left Batman behind um, but but then to my point is that the only like not the only thing, but the one thing that that Alfred had that could trigger that is letting him know that this this idea of this like love that he thought he had with Rachel wasn't not that it wasn't there, but that she her making the choice of of picking Harvey Dent and not Bruce Wayne would would help Bruce Wayne kind of like out of this like sunken place that he's found himself in because because he he was was defeating himself over her death and he was like kind of like grieving over it a lot and and then even like the lost love right like he thought that if she was still alive they would have been together he thought that her, her death was on his hands and and everything else right but then my point is exactly that is like that that would all kind of like fizzle a little bit yeah. knowing that she chose harvey dent like she didn't choose bruce wayne mm. because then it kind of give like it 
it gives him that closure like just like in any relationship you need a closure to move on but he never got a closure his closure is just that she died mm. like he didn't know what sh what her heart was like pursuing right. you know like yeah. so he never got like that letter that he should have gotten from alfred but he saved him from pain which we saw he's like you were in a lot of pain and so i didn't i burnt that letter i burnt the letter to save you from a, a, a another world of pain even yeah yeah and and i think that it's just the idea that like then it wasn't true love right you know like that's what he had to come to closure with is like is it true love is it not true love right and and i think that rachel chose harvey dent and it makes sense because she can relate to harvey dent more it's like bruce wayne was always her master you know like his family was the master of her mom and her mm. subsequently you know like they were all always above them right and then harvey dent might have been a guy who lifted himself from his own bootstrap and like got himself to the position that he got in and it's in the same field of work and so they have way more in common and there's way more chemistry there there's way more to talk about there's way more you know similarities shared with the upbringing and so it makes sense yeah. that she would want to connect with someone like that and then what's interesting is like bruce wayne and selena i I have to give it more thought, but I think that they're perfect for each other because both of them just do what they have to do in order to survive, kind of. Mm. Like, survive themselves. Again, I, yeah, I, yeah. I have to, like, give it more thought. But, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I no, I definitely agree. Like, I do think that, th like, that's what Selena, which is Catwoman, right? Like, yeah. that's what she does. It's like, she you can tell that she do, like she's probably had it really tough like a harsh upbringing like obviously she hasn't been privileged um a because she learned like some self defense mm -hmm. stuff and b like she despises the rich and wants to take from them as much as possible i think i know exactly what it is yeah, and, go. and i just quickly thought of it, it, it it's um that selena both selena and bruce are are used to and understand what it means to have to wear a mask mm. in order to smile like like every smile is painful it's non-genuine you, you know it's just like blake told bruce wayne it's like practicing in the mirror like you have to practice how to feign happiness because you've just gone through so much suffering. And so they relate on that fundamental level where both of them understand that pain. And that's why they gravitate towards each other because these are people that have been hurt by this world. And then they have these skills and these abilities and it's up to them to use their power for good. And they understand the idea of having to hide themselves, of, ha of having to be ashamed of who they are, of having to use alter personalities of having to speak in like characters you know like when when bruce wayne the billionaire is speaking to selena selena says maybe i like the chaos here it's like it's like always just playing this character until she comes back and she realizes and that's a manifestation of who she actually is and, and that just made me think it's like just like you're saying like they both have to put on <coughs> a, pr a different portrayal of themselves but they have they both align in what they believe in because Bruce doesn't really resonate with the whole rich billionaire playboy persona mm. like he doesn't. And so that's why he even says like he pretends to be Bruce Wayne when mm. when someone asks him like like uh, what mask do you wear? And he says Bruce Wayne. Yeah, that's his she mask pretends to be the, Selena. The true him is is Batman. Yeah. But then Bruce Wayne is his mask, which is so interesting, right? It's like you, it's like the the mask, the physical mask is Batman, but the right. real mask is this Bruce Wayne because person that he plays. Again, the Batman is an archetype. Right. It, our archetypes resonate with the soul, so they are products of the soul. So he is the soul and not the man. Yeah. So that's why the man can die in peace, and so can the symbol. But the symbol will never, because the soul is everlasting. It's immortal. Yeah. And then, and then, just really quick. In The Dark Knight, we established a lot of similarities between Batman and the Joker, mm. and and we said how they, like, complement each other. I think that Bane is the the product in, in, like, an alternate timeline, parallel universe. That's what Batman could have been. So it's a reflection of what 
could have happened with just one choice of just following blindly what Ra's al Ghul was, was um, teaching and what, and what he asked of him. If he had accepted that path, of of blind violence through just prophecies and through belief systems right then he would be no different than the people that he <laughs> protects other people from which was the initiation it's like he had yeah. to kill someone exactly. in order to and and bane obviously took that path right so you have to corrupt but your hands your mortal hands with blood but but that's another thing right like bane <clears throat> took that path because I if you think about it like he was stripped of all hope and so mm -hmm. this was like a path of hope it's like following this whatever league of shadows or whatever it's called yeah and then for 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 um bruce wayne it was it was a bit different because you know he didn't he didn't grow up in that same like circumstance or didn't have that like same mm -hmm. uh you know, being yeah, in yeah, the, yeah, it being yeah. in that prison yet mm -hmm. at the time. Um, hold on, I'm gonna just real like super quickly just like read, because mm -hmm. um, I only have, I only have like two more things I think. Take your time though. Oh, uh, <laughs> the one man's tool is another man's weapon. I thought that that was super interesting. It's like, um, I think that information is is something that you can compare that to it's like yeah. people can either use information as a tool or use it as a weapon um and so i think that and just like um, like anything but but really it's like what like what you use your your voice for and what you use your like what you're relaying to people for and some people will use it as a tool it's like meant to help and aid and assist it's mm. meant to to be for the greater good and then the contrast is that there are people who use it as a weapon it's like all for themselves it's like they yes. they are defending themselves and and um and it causes more harm than good yeah and it like just like i said it can either liberate or it can oppress right you know and then that's why you have cases of like libraries burning and yeah. and like you know, records being kept in the Vatican Library and the Library of Alexandria burning. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, peace. The thing that you said, peace has cost you your strength. So I found I just like wrote that down because that's how he worded it. And I thought it was interesting. Um, uh, oh, yeah. And I wrote the same thing, too, that ba Bane and Bruce are alike. They're they're one and the same, but just opposites. Yeah. So it's yin and yang. Mm. And then uh yeah, and then I think I I think that's it. And then I just wrote that the screen would narrow on times of tension and it would widen when like it narrowed for example whenever when Batman was speaking to Talia and she revealed that she was um Raza Ghul's daughter and it it narrowed while bruce was inside of you know was in the pit of uh this prison pit or whatever you mean full screen and then it it narrowed while widescreen uh -huh. like widescreen is when you have black bars yeah on top. yeah okay that, uh, yeah th that's what you mean okay okay why yeah widescreen. Okay, yeah, yeah yeah and then it would it would uh full expand screen. Yeah, yeah full yeah, yeah. screen yeah. when it was like other stuff going on but yeah i just thought that that was interesting because it made you like focus on the moment i didn't even pick up on that until <coughs> uh, until like you pointed it out no and i i was noticing it doing that and i was like huh like i didn't even realize it and it was so mind-blowing to me because it was so obvious like once i realized it and w once you pointed it out and i started like paying attention no, but and i was like oh my god but but i think like that's on purpose like yeah for sure you're like even for people who don't like notice it right away it's like but but your your like uh, tension and focus on that thing change like shifts, mm -hmm. and I think that that's what kind of made me pick up on it because it would it would do the widescreen where you had like the black uh, out um, bars. Yeah, and then that's when I would like feel like so much more like like you know in that moment, mm -hmm. and then I realized I was like wow like it's cinematic it feels so cinematic, and then. And then I realized why I'm like, oh, it's because they're they're like, <laughs> you know, narrowing your focal point, mm -hmm. you know, versus yeah. when it's full screen. It's like you 
you have all this like all this space of seeing different things and then when it's just on the person's face for example or when like and with less space on the screen yeah. you notice it more but yeah that's all i had and i lastly just want to say that i really like the movie yeah and uh alfred is the best alfred is the goat and uh, uh bruce Mr. wayne Fox no bruce goat. wayne is the best and then it's and then it's alfred and then it's I I have a special spot <laughs> in my heart for Alfred. Yeah. Special spot in my heart for that guy, man. He's an amazing character. Yeah, but I think yeah, but I think I think Bruce is uh, slightly <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> slightly better. Yeah. Just just because look like I don't think anyone's better though. No, I, I don't. I don't mean it in that way. <laughs> I'm just like saying, like favoritism, yeah, like my yeah. favoritism at least. It's like it's slightly higher. Yeah. Just because, like, um, it's like more noble. Like, like he. No, takes like, all those like even his, like even the way he is with Alfred, right? Like he took note of that of what alfred said, said about yeah. the cafe and then he went there and they did that thing and that's something else i wrote down but i didn't even mention it but where he said like w and we don't have to say anything but we'll look at each other and we'll nod and then that's it and i thought that that was like so profound it's like yep. the unspoken it's just like uh, it's like what comes with that like peace even it's like nothing has to be said like it's the closing of a chapter even and then you it's move like on. he can trust that bruce is gonna be okay mm. because all like up until up until that point it's like all the stress like especially with him being batman it's like all he promised was to his dad was that he would protect Bruce. Mm. He would make sure that he like he would be okay. And and, and he made it. And and him being Batman was always like putting that at risk. It's like him yeah. being Batman was always like, like and so he had to like literally walk away because he gave him an ultimatum. It's like you either are going to show up as Bruce Wayne, or I have to leave. And yeah. then he and he knew that he would have to leave as soon as he revealed that he burnt the letter. But but that's what he needed to do because then it's like, okay, in a way, it's like it's not my responsibility anymore because I gave him the choice yeah. to either have me in his life and, and him be Bruce Wayne and, and it's for his – and it's f like – it's in his best uh, interest, interest, right? Mm -hmm. But he chose not to. So, okay, so I have to step away and now – and but then at the end, obviously, when he regretted that, see like seeing that he probably died well he died because that's what he thought and then he was crying like towards the father's grave like mm. saying i failed you and stuff but but yeah anyways i i just thought it was like i just thought it was like wholesome you know the last thing i'll say on that and it'll be the last thing i say too is um is that to me, it's it's another conundrum, right? Like it's another paradoxical uh, decision that you have to make. It's like there's no right decision to make, but it was killing Alfred's heart and his soul to see Bruce Wayne throw away all of that potential and become depressed and become isolated for eight yeah. years. Just like a, a hermit, you know, like he was, he like he just became like a person that was just imprisoned in his own prison. Yeah. In the prison of his own making. And so then he, against his own wish and, like, knowing that there was a risk attached to it, he, he had to motivate Bruce Wayne in ways of, like, okay, like, yeah, like, get out there. Like, be Batman. Because it's better for you to kind of risk your life for the world than it is for you to just kill well, like, your yeah. potential, you know, like, that human potential and that potential to save the world, you know. So it's it's better to let your son kind of venture off into the world and sacrifice himself for the benefit of the people of the world than it is to see your son just succumbing and just imploding on himself, you know? Yeah. And, and that's w like, that was what really like w he was very conflicted with. And then I just found it so sad kind of how Alfred is just alone because he's, he, his whole life dedicated his life to serving a family. And so he would live there and he was always there and that's all he has known and then even seeing Bruce, <clears throat> you know, like better off and like being able to like live a normal life now. It's, but it's still Alfred going on these vacations alone with no company. And I just felt sad for him. And I and I still feel sad for him because I feel like the right ending would be 
inviting Alfred over to the table, you know, like they can nod and they can do their, their little thing for the cameras. But then once the cameras are turned off and this is just me pretending that it's a real thing that happened. <laughs> but once the cameras are off, it's like Bruce Wayne just like no, gets I'd up. I like to believe that too. For yeah. Sure. Like, like he gets up and hugs then, and them. then yeah. hugs them. And then Alfred just cries and just like collapses in his arms. For and sure. then, and then he invites Alfred to like live in the guest house that, that they bought off of the coast of it like italy and stuff yeah. yeah no i definitely think that too for sure i'm like i <coughs> i definitely like idealize but oh i just lastly wanted to point out that i love the full circle moment of using the bruce man uh the wayne mansion mm. for a orphan uh full circle ho- uh what do they call it orphanage a, a um no a boy's home basically oh, boys yeah because yeah. it's it's just for boys but um, I thought that that was perfect. The 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 revealing of himself to Gordon by saying the thing about the coat, like everything perfect. was, yeah. everything just like every knot, everything was tied. It was just mm-hmm. the, it just all like every loose end was tied up from the first movie to the last movie, and I thought that that was just great. Well, perfect. obviously like the whole Joker thing, but that's like we just assume like all right, the Joker is locked up and yeah. that's fine um but but yeah like and it makes sense like eight years later so the joke you know like yeah. if if there was anything about the joker then they would mention it but it's like eight years where we just assume he's like locked up those eight years so i guess that's a good thing yeah. um but yeah uh i just really like that like using the mansion for as an orphanage it's like wow that was that was so full circle and then even like when when the funding stopped to the boys home and mm-hmm. and Blake pointed it out to Bruce he immediately like responded like wait what do you like uh well well like asked Alfred and then you can tell like his it kind of like sparked his interest in being Batman again because Mr. Fox was saying oh we don't have like any profit we don't have whatever there's no like income so it's like basically it was getting it was getting dissolved right Mm -hmm. um so then he like him stepping into that role was for that purpose too it's like he he hit like the future of these kids rests on his shoulders it's like you know Mm -hmm. especially because he's been in that situation where he was an orphan child and didn't have parents and so um yeah i just really like that i like that everything came full circle i think christopher nolan is just a amazing direct yeah amazing great trilogy like i keep saying perfect but obviously nothing's perfect no but but it it was yeah Yeah. i do think so i think it's just literally a perfect circle it was like amazing but yeah that's it all right so we have 50 seconds on the clock to close this out um Thank you so much, guys, for watching. If you enjoyed it, uh, don't forget to leave a like below. Comment below. Let's start a discussion. We'll both be engaging with the positive ones that are open to further conversation. Um, Turn on your notification bell. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget that it's never wrong. To be mentally gone. Peace Peace to the the world. world.